Hello, everyone. Welcome to the virtual Iowa Horse Fair booth here in Des Moines, Iowa, in my kitchen. Um, we're going to get the day started as we have a bit of stage managing to do as far as time and staying on, on track is concerned. But um, if you guys are new to Zoom, as many people are new to Zoom right now, new to web conferencing, trying to learn how to connect with each other through the internet now, um, you'll find a mute button on your, uh, on your toll bar there. It should be on the far left. Uh, Michelle, who's running our tech for us today, she uh, put this little slide together. So we're grateful for Michelle to be doing that. And uh, she also will be looking at our chat box if there's any questions that come up. You can get to the chat box by those three little dots there on that same toll bar. Uh, you would click that and the chat would open and then you can type your questions in. There's also the ability to raise your hand. Um, so if you see that, you can raise your hand and we will certainly get to your question or your comment um, at that time. I went ahead and put my PTI sticker on that we had done for the horse fair. I forgot to put my sticker on. I'm kind of excited about that because I'm wanting to, I've been wanting to give people stickers. <laughs> um, so welcome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to turn the video off and on throughout the presentation, if necessary, to, to show people some of the equipment, some of the light tools that we use. Um, and if anybody's got a question throughout, we'll stop the recording. I'm sorry, not stop the recording, but I'll, um, I will be stopping and starting my video recording throughout the presentation as needed. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off right now and read some of our um, our beginning statements before we really get into the presentation. All right. So, uh, once more welcome. As you know, uh, Photonic Therapy Institute was going to have a booth at the horse fair this year. It would have been our sixth year at the horse fair. And when it got canceled, I thought to myself, I remember, I'll always remember where I was when I heard that the horse fair was canceled this year. I was at a, a natural grocery store and I didn't even, I was like, okay, well then we're doing it online. I, I didn't even stop and go, oh man, what do you mean? Now what are we going to do? Didn't even flinch. I was like, all right, we're going to do it online. We're going to have a webinar and people are going to share and it's going to be awesome. So that's what we're doing. Um, I'm going to go through a, a couple of, of um, basic things before we get started here. So our 2020 virtual Iowa Horse Fair booth, today's intention is to focus on assisting our horse's health, wellness, and vitality. Photonic Therapy Institute and those involved with Photonic Therapy Institute are not physicians or veterinarians. We are light therapists with many years experience of helping humans, horses, and pets with light. The webinar is not meant to treat, cure, diagnose any person or animal. It is intended to be an open forum to share approaches in helping to lower pain and balance the body using light, also known as photobiomodulation and photopuncture. And we'll be respectful of the schedule and time today as it requires a bit of technology stage managing. You can use the chat box for questions, as we've said prior, uh, or you can raise your hand. We welcome conversation along the way, uh, time permitting, and please refrain from using a client or person's name so as to respect their privacy. And finally, uh, if, you, if somebody sent you to this webinar today, make sure that you get back to them when you've completed the webinar and they can answer any questions for you or uh, if you have an order that you'd like to place, please do so through the person that sent you to this call or this webinar. So today's Iowa Horse Fair virtual webinar is brought to you by Photonic Therapy Institute. Um, we'll get into the, how, the history of Photonic Therapy Institute and what it all offers uh, in a little bit uh, into the presentation. But um, just know that it's an institute for learning about light uh, and targeted light therapy, as well as, you know, we talk about panels and, and some other things, but our core is um, targeted light therapy and we'll really get into what targeted means, um, re referencing that. So uh, since this is a horse fair booth, I thought I would put a picture of me at the Iowa Horse Fair demoing from a few years ago. 
I like this picture because as we all know, uh, we all know what it's like to be in freezing windy temperatures and working with our horses, either helping them through an imbalance or just their regular feeding schedule. We are their caretakers and we form a tremendous bond with them, especially when we know that they're in pain and not feeling well and they can't talk to us. We have to feel and, and learn and assess and do what we can to help them out. So the bond that we can create is just tremendous. And I hope that this picture was gonna resonate with, with you today, all you horse fair people. Um, I, I that was a cold, windy day. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is that I'm working on a horse from the Diamonds and Dust Drill Team here. Uh, those ladies have always been wonderful to me the last few years at the Horse Fair. I remember my the first couple of years that I was at the Iowa Horse Fair and trying to find a horse that I could work on for a demo. Uh, I had a demo on usually two or three, one, one each day of the Horse Fair. And most people won't let you work on their horse that day because they got a show to be in and they don't want you know the the horse if it they know how that horse trots they know how that horse lopes they know and, and they don't want that to get off any before their performance well i've got a degree in theater so i can understand where they're coming from but at the same time i'm going well what about my performance <laughs> i got to show people how light affects their animal um so as i continued up and down the, the stall aisles of the horse fair uh, a horse barn there. I, I turned the corner and I saw all oh, the purple streamers and the white streamers and all the glitter and uh, I had no clue who these people were but it turns out they were the diamonds and dust drill team and they have uh, I, I turned the corner and I said can I use anybody's horse for a demo that I have to do later today and the coach and the and the young ladies were all like well sure yeah do you want to work on this one well, what about that one over there? Did you want to check out that one? And suddenly I have like 10 or 15 horses at my disposal and I could go into any of the, well, I prefer to take them out of the stall, but I could go and, and look at them and do a little bit of an evaluation and, and uh, pick out a demo horse. And we've continued that relationship for the last couple of years. Uh, in fact, I had a, a young lady call me, well, she, she messaged me uh, a couple of weeks before we found out that the horse fair was canceled. And she made sure to be first in line to see if her horse could get uh, light therapy at, as, a, as a demo horse at the horse fair. Uh, unfortunately, we were unable to do that, but I always like to give them a little bit of a shout out. Um, not only are they have been wonderful to me, but we have light in common. If you go to a, a night performance of the Diamonds Industrial Team, it's gonna, it's, they're, they're phenomenal. It's really cool to watch. And of course, I love photons for light. So... I'll forever be grateful for them and uh, what they've continued to, the relationship we've continued to build. So here I am not in the cold wind uh, horse fair days. I am uh, a Reiki master teacher and I am a certified light therapy instructor. When I first was done, uh, when I first got certified for the equine aspect of light therapy, I started Connolly photopuncture. And at the time, I was going to go out and work on other people's horses. I didn't realize that my life's path was actually going to be teaching others about light therapy and really getting it into people's stables and their homes so that they can use it for self-care. Um, I think what's going on in the world right now with coronavirus, we certainly um, have learned that there's some stuff that we can mitigate at home and, and not have to overwhelm some of the hospitals and the veterinarian offices. Um, so that's, it's really interesting to watch everything come full circle after working with light for six years. I'm on the board of advanced natural health sciences, but I think the, the biggest bullet point to take away from this slide is that I am a photo biomodulation enthusiast. Um, but photo biomodulation is basically light therapy. It's modulating biology with photons or light. I have all sorts of light therapy tools and um, it's, I can't tell you all the amazing things that it's done for myself. Uh, my team here uh, at the horse fair will be sharing some of their testimonials, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you how I got started. So maybe late high school, early college, it was maybe early 2000s or so, I saw a clinician use light on a horse. And he's kind of a, a less is more 
person. So uh, no, no bits in the mouth, no shoes on the feet. Um, and at the end of the weekend, he told us he was going to work on this horse that had kicked out a trailer and was in a lot of pain. And so the whole group that was at the clinic that weekend, you know, we were kind of like, okay, sure. You're going to put light on a horse and it's going to help them. All right, we'll watch. Not only did we watch, but my aunt, uh, who I was with that day, she was the one that was able to put light. You know, he said, anybody want to volunteer to put light on the horse? And she did. And we watched this hurt animal that was trying to protect itself and protect itself from any more pain. So its head's held high and there's a, you know, there's a group of 10 or 15 people around it. That's stressful. And we watched it with its head high start to slowly, slowly drop. And then its eyes got soft and they started to blink. And then, you know, licking and chewing occurred. And I can't remember all of the um, releases that that horse began to give, but my aunt was standing next to me, elbowing me going, you could do this. You could do this. And I'm sitting here going, well, remember college? Remember how I've been going to school all these years and then I'm going to go off to college? Uh, what about that? <laughs> well, I did go off to college and then I got into corporate America, but that didn't resonate with me. So. I went and took a course with Kay Aubrey Shemain, whom we'll be talking with and about more a little bit later. But uh, Kay, I found online when I was at my corporate job and I was researching that light stuff that I had seen all those years before. So uh, long, longer story short, I ended up purchasing a oh, five or $6,000 light therapy system that I could use on a horse and it would, it had a couple of different aspects to it. One is that you could scan the horse and it would beep at you when it found an imbalance. So you see the picture there on the left, I'm, I'm using the scanner. I've got this big thing on my hip there and I am scanning along and I've got a sponge in my right hand because that will ground me because that, that scanner, it's sending a microelectric current through the animal. So you had to ground yourself. And then if you notice on the picture on the right, there's some green dots on that horse. Uh, when that scanner beeped, we would mark those, those beeps where it beeped with that water crayon. So this is how I, I got my start. These are some of my, the, the pictures that Kay and, and Karen at Photonic Therapy Institute now, but Photonic Therapy Institute wasn't around at the time. <laughs> but pictures that they took of me during my certification process to help get my business going. The right picture shows the light application. Uh, those are some cluster head lights. They've got red and near infrared in them. Um, and what was really interesting is uh, you could scan four or five barrel racing horses and very similar points would start to come up on all of those barrel racing horses. And then maybe the next week you're going and you're, you're working on um, hunter jumper horses. And all of them had very common points coming up, which were different than the barrel racing horses. And so we were, I was talking with Kay and she's telling me that these are all acupuncture points. I don't know anything about acupuncture. I didn't know anything about light. Um, but boy, was my world gonna change uh, as, as soon as I, I took her course. So we, started to notice that the scanner, though it's an awesome tool to use, and it really got me going uh, in the industry and learning about light, uh, but that scanner was inconsistent with its calibration for me, so I would have to send it in to be repaired, and it would take a week to get to the repair shop, you know, and then a week to repair it, and then a week back, and that's just not great business to be without the scanner for three weeks. I did learn how to evaluate the horse with my hands during Kay's class, which I was very grateful for when my scanner wasn't working, or if your horse was wet. You can't scan a sweaty horse. You can't scan a hot horse. Um, so again, a good tool. It was a great teaching tool. It got me going, it got me started, but it just really wasn't the most efficient thing. Uh, I just didn't realize it yet. Here we have um, some pictures of me doing an evaluation at a county fair here in Iowa. Uh, Charlie was the first horse that I worked on after taking Kay's course, and he had had some hock imbalances. And it was so wonderful to, to have somebody say, well, yeah, work on my horse. 
it just felt so good to be like, all right, I'm educated. I can do this. I'll go work on Charlie. And uh, then Charlie went and uh, did pulls or barrels or something like that and came back and the owner was just overjoyed with how well Charlie did, which made me feel better. And I'm sure Charlie felt better. So it just really raises everybody's vibration when, when you're working with light and, and, and helping. Um, so that's the, me going through the evaluation there on the left. And then on the right, we've got a short clip of how we've been evolving the evaluation, um, taking, taking bits and pieces of other evaluations and tossing them in with what we were already doing to form a, a solid one that we teach now. He's so pretty and shiny. So you saw just a, a little clip of that. <clears throat> and again, I, I would never go back to the scanner. It was a great tool, uh, loved it to pieces at the time, but it, it really just wasn't gonna be as efficient as doing a, an, an evaluation. And when you learn the evaluation, um, the more you do it, the more muscle mem memory you create, the easier it is. You don't even think about it anymore. So now I don't have any heavy equipment, uh, and my torches that you see there travel very, very well. Um, I just have that on my hip area here. Get my laser pointer out. I just put lights on my hip. You'll hear some other people talking today about how they put it in their pocket or, you know, you can put it in your purse. Uh, travels easily and anywhere. And then on the right here, you see I have a chart in my hand. So we are using charts a lot more these days to help people get their horses into health and balance and overall wellness. I'll get to the next slide here in just a moment as I let my dog back inside. We are all live and at home working through uh, home life and self-care and the coronavirus, all that going on. So the next slide talks about what we're all familiar with if you're a horse person is veterinarian care. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, in 1998, the cost of veterinarian care for uh, lameness issues alone, just lameness, was approximately $432, or 432 per incident, a total of $192 million. So by 2010, that figure is, uh, in some estimates, it's doubled. Uh, other estimates, it's tripled. And I think something that we can take away from the slide here today uh, and in the world that we're in right now is not only is that a lot of money, but it's also starting to overwhelm our veterinarians. We're starting to overwhelm our doctors. And it's, 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 it's making us learn how we can mitigate our own health and wellness at home or in our own stables. Um, so we, we have to learn that we're, and I think we are learning that we have to take better care of ourselves and better care of our animals' bodies. Um, it's, it's our responsibility. It's, it's our body or it's our animal. So, um, we can do what we can for them at home prior to seeing the, the vet or the doctor. So a uh, frequently asked question we get is, well, what does it do? What does light do? Well, it combines a lot of different modalities. It balances energy points and meridians like acupuncture, relaxes and repairs muscles like massage. We have some great pictures of showing how it realigns the skeleton like chiropractic. Uh, it stimulates and relaxes the nervous system like T-touch, increases circulation like magnets, and reduces pain like herbs and pharmaceuticals. Um, those last two bullet points there actually is what a lot of manufacturers have moved to getting the FDA to clear light therapy for. Light therapy is cleared to increase circulation and reduce pain. Um, make sure that when you're out there looking at different light therapy products that uh, you, you see that they're FDA cleared because that's they've done a lot of paperwork and, and put in some time and money to have it um, cleared for you. So... We have targeted light therapy. That's what 
we do a lot at Photonic Therapy Institute. There's many different tools out there for lights. There's panels that you can stand in front of and receive light from. We love all sorts of light therapy or photobiomodulation. Anything you can do to start getting light into your life, um, especially here in Iowa where we're just coming out of a, a gross winter um, and seasonal affective disorder, that sort of stuff. I will, uh, in a minute here, show my video again and I will show you some of these pads uh, as, as live and living color as I can. Um, but if you see on the far left, that is a Photonic Health pain-free pad. And it's one of the reasons we love this pad is because it's, it's wrapped around the horse's leg here. And this is the controller for it. You can charge it uh, when, in, when not in use. I think you can actually even charge it while you're using it, but, but there's no wires. So uh, you don't have to worry about being plugged into a wall or anything like that. And then on the right, we have, these are Revitavet wraps. They just have uh, red light in them, whereas the Photonic Health wrap has a lot more bells and whistles. It's got different light settings to it. Um, however, the uh, Revitavet wraps work really well themselves. They are a 20 minute session time, whereas the Photonic Health one is a 10 minute session time. I could go into a lot more specs on all of them. Um, just know that they each work well. They're each light, uh, direct light therapy. Um, and then on the right, we have photopuncture, which is acupuncture with light instead of needles. Um, so I'll go ahead here and find my toll bar for my video, and I'll show you some of these lights via the video here. Um, so here's that one on the far left, the, the pain-free pad turned off right now. But it's really easy to clean too. Um, it's not, you don't submerge it in water, but it, it does a lot better in, you know, the barn, mud, water, uh, gross stuff. You can just wipe it down. Uh, this is the controller that you would charge prior to going out to the horse. Um, and go ahead and turn it on. Here it is in all of its glory. It's super bright, puts out a lot of power. You can't really see it that well when it's on uh, through the video lens there. You can bleach yourself out with it. <laughs> um, but it has red, blue, and near infrared and, and different settings of light. It's really got a bunch of bells and whistles to it. Um, and so this is one that we really like. Um, next, I'll show you the next picture over that Revitavet wrap. Um, the one in the picture is mostly for ankles and fetlocks. This guy is called a, a tendon saver. Uh, as you can tell, it's it's a little less, a lot less power to it than the Photonic Health uh, pain-free pad. It's still a, a great, great pad for use. Um, great for increasing circulation, reducing pain. I know people like Kay, who's on this call today. She used these for years and years and years before there were there was anything else out there, uh, and got great results. So, nice another little, nice tool to have. Um, and then on those pictures on the right. We're going to talk a lot more about photopuncture, so bear with us as we uh, unravel the photopuncture world. But here is a handheld light, and there's settings on it for high, low, and pulsed. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that right now, I suppose. High is generally we just, I always just turn the light on, and generally I'll use high. I use low when I'm working around the eye, just because it's not as bright. This isn't gonna hurt my eyes. It's just more comfortable to have it on low around the eye. Um, cats, they're, they're more sensitive to energy and, and photons are energy coming out. So if you have some animals that are a little bit more sensitive, you might start on low. Pulsed we use for uh, getting deep into to tissue and uh, helping to release spasms, that sort of stuff. I don't really, depends. I, I guess I, I do use pulse, but not as often as I just turn it on and use the main high setting. Um, as you learn more about photopuncture, you can learn more on different techniques to use a pulsed setting. And oftentimes that's a two torch technique. So you would be doing two at the same time. Um, but for all intents and purposes right now, turning on your light and using it, that's, that's the biggest step right there. Uh, we also have 
won't talk about as much today because photopuncture, the acupuncture with light aspect, we do mostly with just, just red light. Um, but we also do have these torches in blue. Um, and we'll talk about blue light and its benefits as well. So just so you know that blue light is in our repertoire. Does anybody have any questions for me based on any of the pads that I just showed or the, the torches here? No, okay. And then everybody saw Photon back here. He's our visitor for today. Photon, if you've got any questions that come up, he can help show us on a horse uh, where, where to put our lights and that sort of stuff. He comes to us from Pam Crease. He will go back to her tomorrow but he's been happily teasing my dog. She doesn't know whether or not to play with him or if he's a stuffed animal that she can destroy. So we have stalled him up here and she's been very respectful of him. We, she put the, the halter on um, from one of her miniature horses that she has. And so he smells like a horse. So my dog's quite confused. Um, all right, well then I'll say goodbye with the video for now. And then we'll, we'll head into some more differences between direct light therapy and photopuncture. All right. Next. So an effort, uh, frequently asked question that we get all the time is, well, what's, what's the difference between light therapy and photopuncture? And the easiest way to describe it is that light therapy is the application of light to any area of tissue to stimulate circulation, tissue repair, and assist healing. Photopuncture is targeted application of light instead of needles to specific energy points to affect the entire body. Um, so the next slide really kind of helps with, well, when do I use which one? It's another frequently asked question, which is, uh, an obvious question, right? So with light therapy, we uh, tend to put it over like a big issue such as a big wound or broken bones, uh, muscle stiffness, arthritis, that sort of thing. There's also uh, really great studies out there about putting light on the head, the human head, uh, for traumatic brain injury. There's studies out there about Alzheimer's, dementia, and the, the industry itself is really growing so there's going to be more and more studies coming out about light therapy and photobiomodulation. Uh, photopuncture more stresses things about uh, using it for structural imbalances, for emotional issues. Uh, you, can, you guys can all read these. Performance enhancement, chronic health challenges. Um, so hopefully that, that helps simplify it a little bit more. Light therapy, we're increasing circulation and decreasing pain in that localized region, whereas photopuncture is uh, helping throughout the whole body. Um, another, another question we get often when describing these things is, well, why are you using LED instead of laser? Well, there's a few reasons for that. One is that uh, photopuncture applications, when you're using focused laser light, it can overwhelm acupuncture points, and that makes them ineffective for hours or even days. Um, but when we're using LEDs, we're, we're not um, overwhelming those acupoints. And it's also uh, a lot easier on the pocketbook to have the, the LEDs. And um, you're, you don't have to be a practitioner to use them. Uh, you know, a lot of lasers, you've got to be a practitioner because of how high powered they are. Um, we, we know that the LEDs are safe and uh, they're more affordable and you can have them in your home. So those are all just great reasons as to why we were using LED. So when we're talking about photopuncture, we're talking a lot about the meridians of the Chinese meridians and the energy and chi flowing through the body. And that affects everything from organ function to emotions. Uh, the energy flows through the body along pathways called meridians. So much like blood flows through pathways called blood vessels, and we know that nerves flow through pathways called like the nervous system, um, energy flows through meridians. And when the flow becomes unbalanced, it can lead to disease in the body. So if you notice here, I've got my laser pen up. 
this yellow line that runs down from the chest to the hoof, that is the lung meridian. And just as a very general example, let's say that uh, you're, you know, you're a smoker, or somebody's a smoker, and they, they've got the same meridian line running from the chest down to the hoof, to the hand. <laughs> and uh, let's say that we, we palpitate or we push on that LU point there, that's the lung six point. And they might go, ooh, ah, that's really tender. Well, we understand the toxicity of smoking is compromising the lungs, but it's also compromising the lung meridian. So that's why when you press there, you can find a tender spot. Um, think about it in another way is uh, if you have a car accident on the freeway, well, that car accident needs to be cleared in order for all the other cars to continue moving and, and flowing. Same concept, we need to clear that acupoint area so that we can, so that the energy can flow through the meridian and restore balance. So just kind of to, to put all that into one sentence, when applied to targeted energy points, specific colors, and we, we know red uh, is what we use, of light rebalances the correct energy flow, allowing the body to rebalance. Here we have Dr. Marvin Kane. He's a co-founder of the International Veterinarian Society. Uh, he's quoted as to say, when the energy that flows through the body becomes unbalanced, it throws off the health of the horse. Now, Dr. Marvin Kane, uh, he, is, he had done a lot of studying on acupuncture. Uh, he had gone to Japan and China, Korea, um, I, I think. I mean, I know he went over and studied I can't remember if it was China and not Japan or Japan and not China or Korea, but he, he certainly put in his, his acupuncture studies. Uh, he came back to the United States and worked mostly with thoroughbreds. So he had worked with horses like Unbridled, uh, Risen Star, Dynaformer, Life's Magic, many more, Lady Secret. So uh, we're super grateful to him now for all the knowledge that he gained in learning about acupuncture for equines as we now use it for our equines, but with light. So as horse people, we are all very familiar with balance. Balanced riding, balanced saddles, balanced teeth, um, balanced hooves. And it's not unnormal for us to think that, oh yeah, well balance, that makes sense. We just have to learn that there's also the, the meridians that need to be balanced and the energy of the body. So how can a, an imbalance occur? to the meridian system. Well, we kind of already talked about saddle fit and unbalanced riding and dental issues uh, is another one. Also physical and emotional trauma, uh, chiropractic problems and toxicity from drugs and toxicity from feeds and chemicals. All of that can just be overwhelming to the energetic system and uh, that freeway of cars can really get clogged up. So uh, we have a couple things we can do. We can uh, do photopuncture, which we'll continue talking about here, and we can put light on the problem. But overall, the tissues and cells of the body are absorbing light at specific wavelengths, but not at others. So our photonic, or I'm sorry, so our uh, photopuncture torches use specific wavelength of red, as we've kind of said a couple of times already, with the 660 nanometers that's shown to both activate and balance the energy flow. I'm gonna pause here just for a moment and see if anybody has any questions. Um, feel free to use the chat box if you need to. Our next slide is where we're gonna talk a, a lot more about uh, light and the different, um, the different colors of light and why. So if you notice here at the top, we've got the spectrum of visible light that humans can see. Uh, you know, the dogs see different colors than people do. I, snakes see different colors or wavelengths than we do. Um, so we can only see about uh, from, the, from the ultraviolet and blue up to uh, the red, the near infrared actually our eyes don't detect, but um, we'll talk about that because it goes to the deepest into the tissue. But well, let's start back over here at blue light. If you picture this area here is, is the tissue, it's the body. So you've got the skin at the top and then 
just below the skin and the subcutaneous layer, which gets into muscle and, and all that. But blue hangs out just at the skin level. Uh, but it's really great for antimicrobial. Uh, it's great to help soothe nerves. Blue, does, blue is a very calming color. Um, and it's also really great to assist the body in healing wounds. If you move up, up the visible light spectrum here to 700 nanometers, uh, we, we're getting into a little bit further than the tissue and down into the nerves and kind of kind of reaches the top section of the muscles as well. Um, you'll note that I've been saying 660 nanometer light, red is what we use, and this says 700. It's a range. It's like tuning your, your old radio knob to, to get right where you want it, but you've got a, a range to, to fall into there. So it could be 680 nanometers and it would still be in the red spectrum there. Uh, and then again, we've got the, the near infrared that's going down all the way into the muscles, tendons, ligaments. We also know that it can uh, penetrate the brain, hence some of the, the brain health uh, we were talking about a little bit earlier on the slide before. So here we have our, our torches that I was showing you on the video. Uh, there's the blue in the middle, uh, again, antimicrobial, uh, soothing to damaged nerves, and something I would reach for if I had a, uh, a cut uh, on me um, or a wound of sorts. If I didn't have a blue light, I would then reach for my red light uh, as far as wounds and stuff are concerned. Uh, but it also offers the most pain relief and can be reduced infection, and it also helps with cellular regeneration. And then on the far right, there is the 660 and the 850 nanometers. So that is red and the near infrared. We call that torch the red plus because it's red plus near infrared, um, and it offers both both benefits you know you get the deeper penetration with it uh you can use it as a, a photopuncture torch because it's got the red in it um and it's it's really awesome to have both of those in one when you turn that torch on it is both red and infrared people ask us all the time how do you just get the red on or how do you just get the near infrared on you no know, turn it on and and they're each on at the same time so to bring all that back into focus and balance, um, well, how, how do we use these torches to, to bring our horse into balance then if this is so important? Um, so at PTI, we make sure that people get health and balance points uh, with their torch kits so that they can get started. And we'll talk about these throughout the rest of the presentation, but they, um, uh, they're a great way to help begin balancing the body, both for yourself, your horse, your dog, your cat. Um, and we recommend three, three times a week for about uh, 30 seconds or so per point. And you can help stimulate uh, immune response. You can help stimulate um, respiratory, immune, all of that stuff. You can see here on the right uh, what each point goes back to. So if you even, if all you had was this chart and you thought that your horse had some top line issues, then you know that you could work with point number two here and point number three here to help support top line. So that kind of wraps up uh, photopuncture and, and using acupuncture with light and the differences between uh, targeted light therapy versus targeted photopuncture. We're going to go into just general light therapy here a little bit more. So there's four things that we can say about light um, that the FDA, through the clearances they give to, the, to, to some manufacturers, are that it lowers pain, increases circulation, and stimulates cellular repair. And just briefly, uh, it, it does so when we put light on the body, um, nitric oxide, which is a, a natural gas in our system, in our body, nitric oxide releases and our blood vessels uh, expand. And as they expand out, more circulation can go through them. Well, if more circulation is going through, then that means that if I have any inflammation, it's going to help push that inflammation out faster. If I have toxicity, it's going to help push that toxicity out faster. And what's really awesome is that number three there is that it's going to stimulate cellular repair. 
So we'll, we'll talk about that just a little bit more also. So number one, we're lowering pain. And when your horse is in pain, everything else comes second, right? I, it's your horse, your dog, your child. Um, and we, we reach for our lights first. Uh, this goes back to a, a story I have about my aunt, uh, it was about a year, year and a half ago. And her Shetland pony was starting to go into show colic sy symptoms. She went to call the veterinarian and he was out of state. Then there was the second veterinarian who um, was helping with calving at the time and could not get to us. And then the other veterinarian she called just wasn't taking new clients at the time. So she was, what was she supposed to do? Keep walking the pony, I guess. Um, make sure you know try and see if you can drink water but she i said aunt susie go get your lights <laughs> so uh she she got her lights and she got her colic chart and um you know 20 minutes an hour later the ponies pooped the ponies uh stomach and, and colon was making gut sounds and the following day when a veterinarian finally was able to come out they said well hey this is this looks the horse looks great uh the pony looks fine <laughs> so oftentimes we hear that story that uh, the veterinarian arrives and they're like, well, what's, what's wrong with this animal? I don't, I don't know what's going on. It seems fine. Um, and that's because we were able to get there with lights and help get them out of pain and, and get their system flowing and that energy balance flowing again. So number two, uh, light increases circulation. We talked a little bit about wounds, uh, muscle atrophy, other common health issues are rapidly improved or completely reversed restoring blood, lymph, and, and uh, nerve circulation. Increased circulation allows the body to bring fresh repair materials and carry off dead cells and carry off toxins quickly. Mentioned that a little bit more when we started describing how the uh, blood vessels will vasodilate. And then number three here, we have that light accelerates healing. And this is kind of the, the most interesting part. And this is not getting too into the science too much. Uh, there's a lot of science to get into if you want to go down that track. But uh, when, a, when a tissue sustains injury or illness, the energy, is affected, the energy of the affected cells is reduced. So let's say you bruised yourself. Well, your cells and, and stuff in the body where that bruise is, we know that they're not vibrating as quickly as they are when they're a healthy cell. And everything vibrates. And we certainly know that the cells vibrate. Um, so when we put light on it, uh, we're accelerating the mitochondria within the cell, which increases the ATP production, which ATP is fuel for the body. It's like putting fuel in your vehicle. Um, so then the body's got the energy to get to work and do what it needs to do to help you heal. It also sends signals to the brain. So the brain can help release uh, good endorphins and anti-inflammatories, serotonin, all those good chemicals that can be released. Um, it's very, very powerful. Um, so how do we know that we're helping our equine friends, our horses, when we're using light? Some people at the horse fair, and, and that's you know where we were gonna be today, they might've just been getting their horse for the first time, uh, and they're trying to figure out the best ways to care for that horse. So we made sure to, to put this slide in here that uh, you know horses, when they're feeling good, they'll start to lick and chew. Um, they will, their breathing might change. They'll start stretching, um, passing gas and urinating are also very common. Uh, again, we've got the increased gut sounds. Always good to hear horses having gut sounds. It means everything's working. <laughs> and um, as I've said in a story or two, they'll start to drop their head and relax and, and yawn. The blinking and softening of the eyes, all very common for releases. So we'll get to the next slide here and we'll see some releases. This is uh, an off the track thoroughbred uh, named Keegan. And this was one of our courses, uh, one of our live classes that we taught a few years ago. And Keegan had some imbalances up in his hyoid area and his TMJ. Um, if you're not familiar with the hyoid, it it doesn't connect to any other bone. It connects to about, I think in the horse, 12 or 13 different muscles. Um, I don't know if it's 12 or 13, but it's one of those. So if you have a horse that doesn't want to back up, well, maybe it's got to engage a muscle that's connected to the hyoid apparatus. And so that's why it's difficult to back up for that horse. 
or maybe it's not picking up the correct lead. That has a lot to do with the muscles that go back to the hyoid. Um, so Keegan here had some imbalances and we're gonna go ahead and watch his releases because they're, they're pretty powerful. And one of the things to look for is the smile on this lady's face because uh, she, we, although we had seen some releases earlier in the day, some licking and chewing, she, she didn't realize that this was uh, possible. And I just love the look on her face. You can see it there on the far right as well as that, that picture. And I'm not sure if anybody can hear the, the actual video, but I, I left the audio in it if, and if it's coming through on the presentation because you can hear everybody else going, oh, wow, there you go. Yeah, release. Oh, good job. Good boy. You know, let it go and encourage them to, to not hold on to that stuck energy anymore. Uh, the next clip that we have is from one of our team members, actually, who's on the call today and sharing. Uh, so she might talk a little bit more about this horse later on but it's a great video of more releases. You could see at the beginning of that uh, video where her right hand is located, I thought that that was a wound until just the other day when we were talking about it and she uh, had marked that area as a spot to go back and put light on. Uh, obviously, the horse appreciated it and needed it. Um, uh, you can also note that when she put, went to put the light there, the horse started to paw because they're already starting to feel the energy and the photons connect to that area. Um, and at first it might feel like, Ooh, I don't know about the, Oh yeah, actually this is pretty good. So, um, we, we have to help introduce our horses to the lights a little bit first. And as you'll hear later on, once they know what it is and what it does, they'll start lining up to have you do it and to have a session. So we're going to go into some before and after picks. Um, but I can pause for a moment if anybody has any questions or comments. All right, then we'll move on in to uh, some before and afters. You'll note that this is an acute uh, ring bone imbalance. So October 22nd through November 13th, but by adding the benefits of balancing the body's energy flow, not only does the body repair faster, but the horse stays in balance throughout the process. Um, again, if, if we're working with stuff that's chronic, and it's been around for a long time, three years, five years, they had ring bone that was, has been around for a while, it's gonna take a little bit longer to peel that onion back and get down to, to the main issue. This was an acute, um, uh, an acute issue, so it was able to clear up and, and get back to balance a lot quicker. <laughs> the next the next slide here shows three pictures of a horse who had put a T post through uh, her her neck there and um, Kay has the full story on it but I know she lost 60% of her blood as she uh, re received the injury and came up a big hill and this horse just had the will to survive um, as she sliced her carotid artery and a couple of other main neck issues there. I'm not sure if Kay's going to jump in. Sounds like not, so we're going to keep going. Uh, you Sorry, can... my, my internet's very unstable right now. No worries, just if you if you were available, but if not, we'll keep going. Um, so the, the middle picture that you see here is a light therapy wrap. I think it's probably the one that I showed you guys earlier, that tendon saver with just the red light in it. And they come with Velcro straps, so you can attach them just about anywhere. Um, you'll note that it's in plastic, and that's nothing to do really with the wound. It's just to protect the, the light therapy tool, to protect that pad. Um, as you know, when stuff starts to heal, um, it starts to drain. There starts to be gooey stuff, what have you. 
So we're just really trying to protect the pad itself there and the light will go through the plastic just fine. And then here we have August 18th. Um, the, the wound is really healed up there really nicely. And uh, this horse lived to be 40 years old and I was one of the horses that I got to work on for my certification. So she was a teacher for me and um, it's just really incredible how much light can, light can do for us and our animals. Here we have uh, the power of light in six weeks. This is repairing uh, fencing tears with photopuncture. This was not putting light, a light pad directly on the area. I'm sure they were keeping the wound clean. I'm sure you know they, they probably bandaged it uh, and, and, and made sure it stayed clean, but this is through photopuncture after six weeks. Here we have a pastern injury. Um, this, you can read the testimonial there. The picture on the far left is from day seven of the injury. And then we have day 14 in the center. And the last picture is day 36. Uh, it's just really interesting to note how it's healing, but even more so in her testimonial, she's, she said, I don't think there's gonna be much of a scar. And except for some understandable swelling at the beginning, she's been sound the whole time. Usually you'd have a lame horse with an injury like this. Um, the inflammation, the, the body is trying to protect itself from further injury. Uh, and we need that. We need the inflammation and we need that to, to, to tell us and, and protect our bodies. However, we also need that inflammation to move out so that the body can begin doing its healing. And with lights, we're able to accomplish that. We have a laminitis and founder case. Um, this is again, if you look at the dates, there are the 17th of November and the 29th. Um, that's just an incredible transformation. That horse looks like it was in a look at its face, just in so much pain there on the left, and then on the right, uh, just such a difference. I know that uh, they did decide to start changing out some of their nutrition that they were doing, but um, the, the nutrition aspect did not take up did not do this. It was, it was through photopuncture and light therapy. Here we have torqued back and hips. Um, you can see where the, the people's hands are to demonstrate that. This is the horse's right hip here and then left up here, how, how just totally out of balance that is and, and how painful that must be. And on the right, after one session, we're, we've straightened up again. So this would be back to those, those chiropractic imbalances in our animals. Here's another dislocated hip. This was a horse called Diggin' Deep. She was a thoroughbred that was at the racetrack. And as she came out of the starting gate, she whacked her hip on the gate itself and dislocated it. She'd been in the stall for Oh, six, eight weeks, something along those lines. It was a long time. I remember being shocked by how long this horse had to be in this little stall. And I mean, it's a regular sized stall, but still I wouldn't want to be in, in a space that size for that long. And um, she, uh, she would eat like a horse. It was good that she had her appetite. We were happy to hear that, but uh, she would just eat consistently. And we, we figured that she was trying to, take her mind off of the pain that she's in. So she was distracting herself with, with the hay and the food. Um, Kay was in town for this one and we had taken that photonic health wrap pad that you saw me demonstrate here. And then that you saw um, on the far left picture in an earlier slide. And this horse was in a lot of pain. So we had to gain her trust a bit. And Kay started by putting the light up along the neck or the withers and showing her that, hey, this light, it's, it's going to be helpful to you. The intention is to take you out of pain and, and to help you feel better. And as we were sitting or well, standing around talking while Kay was moving that light down and down, you know, we were paying attention to the horse, but we're horse people. So we were talking shop. <laughs> and uh, as Kay got closer and closer to the sacrum and to the hip issue, we heard a loud pop. And I, I turned, because I was a few feet away, I turned and I went, was that the horse? And she said, yeah, it just popped. And, you know, probably had a big release after that. 
Um, and and then I've got a, a picture coming up that this horse was under saddle a year later. So we're super grateful for all that. But I wanted to point out, I think this is a, a really great thing to point out to everybody. You see this line on the horse here. Well, forever, I thought that that was uh, a muscle, uh, a muscle line. Like, oh, they're really uh, in shape. You know, that's that muscle's in shape. Well, really, that muscle is tense. Um, and it's stuck, this horse is stuck in uh, fight or flight. It's got to protect its body. It, if, if it's scared, if somebody goes to touch it, you know, it's a prey animal. It could, it could get eaten. Um, so it, it tenses up just like we do when we're stressed, just like we do when uh, we're handling, when we can't get our life in balance. And uh, if you're sick and if you've been having the flu or you've been throwing up, you're using those muscles over and over again. And so they become really tight. Um, and then you're going to have gut issues. Um, you know, the, when you go to load a horse on a trailer, one of the first things it does is it poops because it's going into a, a little bit of a scary situation. And so it needs to maintain uh, what the body thinks is most important. So breathing blinking, uh, quick decision-making, all of the blood flow, you know, going to, to the head and to the legs to, to take off for fight or flight. Um, and so that is actually not a, uh, a well in shape horse. It's just that that muscle is so tense for so long. Um, and you have a lot of symptoms for colic could come up, um, digestive health and ulcers. So just something I like to note to everybody. But here we have digging deep under saddle. Not the best picture, but it, it is the picture uh, of her. And we're so grateful that she was able to come back into balance and uh, that the owner did purchase some torches and continued photopuncture with her. So, you know, because I, I think that was another one of those horses where it's, well, you're going to have to put them down. Well, no, let's, let's see what other options are available. Another dislocated hip. Uh, this is from our partner down in Australia, one of them. This was a, a young horse, either a, I'm not sure when the dislocation occurred. So I don't know if she was a foal at the time and now she's a yearling in these pictures. But the long story short is uh, this, she's back under saddle. And this one, I, I'm certain they said, no, this horse is gonna be in a lot of pain all its life. You're gonna have to put it down. It's not worth your time. It's not worth your effort or your money. And the owner said, you know what? I know somebody that does red light therapy and they do it on horses and I'm going to call them and see what they say. And uh, this is the result she has there that <laughs> Australia, clever, clever day, six of riding. Uh, we walk and trot and canter. And you can see a comment down there saying spunky girl on the correct leg every time too. Just must, that just uh, feels so good to, to know that these animals are getting the help that they need. And, um, under saddle and enjoying life. So that concludes the overall presentation. Uh, we're gonna have some guest speakers talk today. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about what Photonic Therapy Institute offers, but uh, this would be something that Photonic Therapy Institute offers. It is our introductory online course. It's called the Photonic Horse. It's $299. And we're very grateful to have gotten some courses online prior to us all having to be in isolation. So if you're home right now um, and you're, you're looking for something to do and something to learn, uh, you can go ahead and take our online photonic course class. The equine photopuncture kit is everything you need to get started balancing your horse with uh, light. You would get that online course that I just was talking about. You'd also get two torches. You get the red and then the near infrared, remember that 660 and 850 nanometers of, of red light and near infrared light. And then the second torch is just red light at the 660. And this also includes uh, 21 of our most requested equine light therapy charts. Those are usually $20 a chart. Uh, so those would be a part of this kit. And uh, this would around, this kit would around be uh, $1,200 but uh, during the horse fair here, we have it for 800. Uh, so you're saving, I think a little bit more than $600 there. If you want more information, you can visit that bit.ly link. 
bit.ly slash a hyphen photonic hyphen horse. Um, and then another uh, special that we have for you guys today is uh, the 10% off any PTI torch kit. This goes through tomorrow night, so you've got a little bit of time to think about it. Um, and all of our kits come with the, those health and balance charts that we've started to talk about. You can see there in my left hand, uh, I'm looking at a, I'm using a health and balance chart to help find the points on this horse. And um, our kits do come with a little bit of education to get you going, not just the charts, but a little bit about light therapy and photopuncture um, so that you're not just buying a, a, a tool and not knowing how to use it. Here are those charts, or that the equine chart up close a bit better for you again. Does anybody have any questions? All right, well then we'll be getting into our guest speakers next, which is a really exciting aspect of the, of the webinar, just to hear how light's been working for them. Uh, you're gonna hear stories about not just horses, but humans and, and dogs, and uh, we'll stick mainly to horses, but just know that you know light is it's balancing the, the body with photons, and biology and tissue are biology and tissue, and light is light, so it can be your emu or your cat or yourself. Um, so as, as we all know here on this call, we were going to be at the horse fair booth uh, this, this weekend. And um, when that got canceled, I reached out to the team that was gonna be at the Iowa horse fair with me. And I, I asked them if they wanted an opportunity to still share their story about light, what they use it for and what their intentions are for the coming months and years with light. Um, so, we're gonna go into a little bit about this horse with our next guest speaker, our, our first one for the day here. Um, she worked with this horse whose name is Cupcake. And if you look at the very bottom here, she says that this was three sessions in five days, which is a huge, huge change. Um, she had come to the conclusion after working through our course that the horse had an unbalanced spine the whole time. Uh, she had quit showing her years ago because of how rough she was to ride at a lope, uh, always struggling at halter and showmanship, standing stretched out rather than squared up. And she had followed our assessment instructions online, uh, on the course online, and making sure all the areas she showed any discomfort slash aggression and went back by activating the balance points. And uh, she used it two torches at once there. So um, once again, I'm super grateful that uh, the horse fair booth team came together. We'd been working for weeks prior to really have a successful horse fair. And uh, I'm grateful that they were able to help shift into doing this via webinar. Uh, I don't know if everybody even knew how to do PowerPoint before, but everybody stepped up and, um, and, and really wants to share about how they use light and how it's helped their horses and uh, the stories are great. So I'm gonna go ahead and let Lori um, start her presentation here, Lori, if you're with us, and you can tell us a bit about yourself. I'll move to the next slide. Hello everyone and good afternoon. Um, I am Lori Draper, Cozy Custer Stables, and just a little bit about me. Well, Duncombe, Iowa, first of all, is probably 90 miles south of, or north, North. As the day goes on, I'm forgetting my directions. <laughs> um, north of Des Moines, which is Diana. Mm -hmm. And just a little bit of background about me. I do come from a show horse industry. Um, Mom put me on a horse when I was five into the open shows, and it progressed into the Iowa Paint Horse Club from there. Um, it's been a big shift for me in the last few years. Um, I've I'm finding that I'm, I'm helping others more and getting into more of the aspect of helping the horses with ailments. Um, part of my mission is uh, self-empowerment um, to save people money and save the animals. Too many of them are being put down when they can be helped. And um, back in 2014, I, a major shift for me when I started paying attention more to even my own health is when I become a Young Living Essential Oil member. Um, which was great and all, and but my problem being the, the little mare in the middle, 
is she was costing me over $300 a month in essential oils to keep her upright. She could lay down as long in one period of time as 42 hours. And a lot of you that know horses know that that's, that's knocking on death's door. Um, she had a, a great will. And I will talk about her more later in another slide. The, the mare that is in the picture with me on the top left was my show horse for I don't know, 13 plus years. We did all around classes, but the struggle was she was club foot on one and navicular on the other. I, I sure wished I had the modalities I do now to help her. I couldn't get barriers to come on time to keep her on the right angle and keep her balanced. And she could have used balance emotionally um, too. Um, realizing how important that emotional balance is as well as physical and, and how easy it is to do with light therapy. Um, you can go on to the next slide, Diana, if you would, please. Uh, this is Star, just a, it was a quick onset. We caught it quickly, a, a founder. She came from Southern Iowa. A friend of mine wanted to stable her for a few days and use my arena. And she came from being in a pasture on nothing but grass and round bale. Um, and when he brought her here, he gave her sweet feed, he added alfalfa. And as you see on the, the 1228 picture, she's stretching out and um, she didn't want to walk. She was very lame and she was, she was in trouble. We did a diet change immediately and started the light therapy. Um, and you see how she was by one five, which is, is that even a week? Um, she's under herself. Um, she's happy. She was no longer limping. Just that quick. You catch it on the onset like that. Um, and the right hand side, I've just got examples of lighting up the ting points with the torches. And another one down below by, you can also put um, pads on the front legs as well. Um, want to let me know if I'm missing anything, Diana. <laughs> Oh, you're doing great. I, I just thank you for mentioning the um, that this is the before and this is the after. You're doing a wonderful job uh, reminding us which is which. You ready for the next? Uh, um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I want to mention while you're flipping me over that um, I like to do the acupuncture points while I'm doing a pad therapy. Uh, that's you put the pads on and you can do the acupuncture points. I'm I'm totally sold on. I know with myself and I've heard you mention too. If we're more diligent with ourselves, you can really feel the difference. Even if you're feeling good and you do it three, three times a week, you feel even better. Um, and I want to um, thank you for putting all this together and inspiring us all and giving us the opportunity to share our passion to help others. You're welcome. It brings me joy to hear your joy. <laughs> <clears throat> this this slide here is a mare that was brought to me on August 1st last year. Um, it took most of my time. Um, before she was brought to me, I was going to the owner's place helping her, which got re really debilitating because it was late at night after work and after his work, which was 11 o'clock at night. And I was going through some stuff with my, my old rat terrier as well. Um, and like I told him, I said, if you can get her to my house, I'll help you. Um, the veterinary, just for an example, and this is kind of what I work with in this area, unfortunately. I, I love stories that I hear when the veterinaries recommend um, natural modalities, which you, you do not get that in my area. Um, his veterinary gave him, gave her butte, gave her banamine, and said, your horses are all skinny, and left, left it at that. So um, I did skip a couple of nights just to prove to the owner that this was working. I, I hated to do that, but um, he he was constantly giving me crap about this. And not it's just woohoo magic. So I walked away for a couple of days, and I got the phone call. Are you coming back? Because that was that was the only thing that gave her any relief. <laughs> so and I proceeded to say, yeah, you need to bring her to my house so I can just squeeze her into my schedule. And that we did. Uh, she uh, she could barely walk. As you can see in the top two pictures on the left, um, that's how she came to me. Um, the farrier came two days after that and left me with that mess that's pictured there. And I was very overwhelmed. Um, I needed um, mental and emotional support at this point, and, um, which I got from PTI, which is wonderful. And 
To get to that point, I used both red and blue torches. She got all the uh, wellness points done. She got pad therapy placed on the front legs from the knees down. Um, there was a lot of things that was involved with trying to keep her on her feet, like makeshift shoes until her boots came that we had to order and trying to keep wet feet dry. And oh, anyway, it was, it was, it was a, a full-time job. The picture from the bottom, second one in from the right is me doing ulcer points, uh, which was a must. I, after we got ahead of this and got her feeling good, she went out in her paddock that I made her. She couldn't move far, but it was enough. She felt good, and um, she just laid down, and I, I just got this real sick feeling in my gut that she was going to die. So we needed to evaluate something internally, and that's when I contacted Kay, and she jumped in, and we got to get a diet change going immediately, and that's what we did for her recommendations and, and another item for the ulcers and got her off the ulcer meds and the bottom right corner is how she looked before I sent her home. So, and if, if I was to, if she was my horse and I was, if I had to sell her, um, I could sell her a hundred percent sound. And into the barrel racing world, as you've said, right? That's yes. And it, yeah, she was bred for barrel racing. And, and when I lunged that horse, I mean, it was, it wanted me, it wouldn't make you cry. To see her dig and her passion, her passion truly came out. And she says, I can do this again. Mm -hmm. I truly can. You wipe off all my goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you can feel it and they tell you like that, when they're, when they're almost dead, I mean, that is just, it's, it's, it's a crazy. It's, it's such a good feeling. And in it, I, there was no veterinaries involved. None. Right. Cool. You, you, you know, not always do you need it. <laughs> But in my area, you know, I mean, light therapy, the essential oils and, you know, reaching out to PTI like I did was, was worth its weight and gold. Cool. Are you ready for the next slide? Yep. Okay. And this is the mare from the front side that I mentioned I would talk about later. Um, she was, she was owned by other people. They were trail riding. She, they were tight. She was tied to the trailer and had the saddle on, uh, uh a cow came up over the hill and startled her. She went backwards, the halter broke, and she tore both stifles and has broken vertebrae in her spine. And I hope I'm saying that right. Um, we, uh, this is the one that was costing me over $300 a month in essential oils to keep upright. And I just, I had this feeling that I was, I was, I was missing something. And back in, two, I can't remember if it's 2016 or 17, Diana was thinking maybe 17. I met Diana um, at ARL. Her, we were there. We were invited to dem demonstrations. And I didn't get to see her demonstration because I was chasing my, my horse down to, that I was to do a light therapy, uh, actually, pardon me, a raindrop session on. And I got with Diana later on that day. And, and I was very intrigued. And I got lost upon my way with finances and stuff like that. And, came back to PTI wanting to learn more and they welcomed me with open arms. And this has helped, it's just saved me a ton of money and, and we're no longer ordering 300 plus dollars a month for essential oils on her. And, and, and it couldn't be anymore because they were, you put essential oils on like they're, you're recommended to, diluted or not, which I always recommend diluted, it can burn them. And, it, and it's different from human to human as well. With her, her stifles were red. They were next to blistering. I, 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 I got to find something else. You know, and my something else was light therapy. And, and this has been a real game changer. Anybody can do it, as you can see in the, the left picture there. Um, that little girl just turned eight years old, and she wants to become a vet eventually. And I'm thinking, how powerful is this, you know? Um, yeah, she's, she's kind of my little sidekick now and likes to do light therapy on everything. She thinks it's just amazing. And I think it's incredible that, it, that it's that easy. And I think that sometimes that's maybe what people don't understand. If it's not invasive or it don't cost you a lot of money, it probably doesn't work. Right. Wrong. <laughs> that is wrong. <laughs> yeah. um, the next slide. Mm -hmm. There's Cupcake. Hey, yep, Cupcake. Cake, our little rock star, um, showed her um, for quite some time, but it should have been a lot longer. I finally give up because of her standing stretched out when I could put her in line for 
falter or showmanship and, and always being unhappy and practically hurting me as, as we loped off. It, 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 I had horrible back pain myself. Um, and taking the class with PTI, the online course is where this come from and being able to evaluate them the way you're taught in this course was a game changer. Um, and it didn't, it didn't take very much time to do this and the horse will actually lope on her own now. So it's, it's a pretty big aha moment. And I want to state that when I first started the light therapy on her, she reared up all the way. She tried to kick me several times and you know, that's something to state too, is, you know, you have two things that I've learned that through my journey is people will tell you, you can't cross tie your horse to do light therapy. If you're alone and you need to tie the horse, tie the horse, just get the lights on them. And then you learn your fine line. Are they, are they telling you no, because they're in pain or because if, if, if I allowed her to tell me no, I wouldn't have got to this point. Well, and Lori, I think you, you allowed her to tell you no. She was just telling you, no, you, you've got to be more gentle or you've got to figure out something else, you know. Uh, protecting herself. Protecting herself. So, um, yeah. And now ever since, she's always welcomed them. Right. And, and she rides it's better just by doing the wellness points prior to riding her oh, it don't take that long uh we we heard what was it last week you finally you you got to ride cupcake yeah it's not very often i get to do something for myself and i, I took a moment <laughs> and oh. i had a beautiful ride i shut my eyes and i let her take the lead and and gave her the reins and she lowered her head and she was just welcomed she was just like i got this i'm gonna give you a nice ride <laughs> A lovely thanks. Yeah, very lovely. Next slide. Yep. Okay, and here I have just kind of a mix of things that, that I've done along my way of my journey. I uh, suffer from migraines and I have for years. And um, I like to use the probe, the red probe for my migraines, and I like to change it to the blue for sinus infections. I find it to be very beneficial. And the next picture is a girlfriend's son that, that likes to, well, he's been self-empowered with the lights. He's gotten rid of his own um, fevers and tummy aches, and, and he asks for the lights, and, and which strikes up a conversation with mom and saves her time of, you know, what's wrong. And, and um, he's just like, I got it. I can take care of this. We're good, mommy. Which I, I just, that just gives me such a warm, fuzzy feeling. Um, like the next, huh? I like to start him young, right? Yes, yes. Uh, he just turned five, so he's pretty young. You got um, but, and a five-year-old. They're gonna. <laughs> yep. But, well, the next thing is, is, is um, on Facebook on one of my pictures too. I have a video from her that her two-year-old is actually asking for that. Sure. So he lifts his shirt when mommy comes with the light. <laughs> <laughs> And he's two, so yeah. They know. Um, yep. And um, the next one is me with my dad, clearing limp. And my dad is, oh, he's never really been open to natural modalities. And, but after I proved to him how this works and he could feel it for himself, he's sold on it and he uses the light therapy every day. He's been diagnosed with COPD we're probably going on four or five years of that. And he had a really bad spell when I first got into the lights and was not very knowledgeable. And he had swollen legs, they were purple, they were seeping and the doctor had him on Lasix and he was just very frustrated and fit to be tied. And so it was my mom trying to bless her heart, trying to help him and assist him every day. And I took the lights over, uh, whether I knew what I did or not, I just started applying lights and it all went away it all went away. There was no more swelling in the legs. The seeping had quit. Um, when you, when you have the COPD, you know, having that on top of it, you know, what a relief being off the Lasix alone. So, and the next picture is a friend of mine that, um, bought the torches and her daughter had, uh, a baby recently and she was suffering from a lot of fluid retention and she went over and 
put the lights on her and in the next day the fluid was gone. The last picture is regarding sad cupcake and I goofing off this winter. Um, you can see that she's more than welcome to accept the lights <laughs> and I thought we could both use it with winter being long and to help us out so we did it together. They're just all great pictures. <laughs> Thank you. In their, in their own in their own way they're all just perfect little great pictures. You've got yep. quite the uh, album. <laughs> <laughs> Thank slide. you. Yep. With every horse person comes dogs. <laughs> we all <laughs> yeah, I love our dogs. And Bandit, bless his heart, he's 17 now. He's 16 in this picture. Um, he had injured his neck, and I took him to a veterinary, and which I do veterinary clear, care clear up in Minnesota, just over the border. And um, when she checked him out, she says, this is great, and, but um, his neck will, will heal but you got to get his teeth done or they're going to kill him. So um, being able to use light therapy to support him through this at his age, having that tube put down his throat to be put under while this procedure was being done, um, it's just amazing. It, what a great relief. I'm afraid if I didn't have it, I, I really truly would have lost him. And he's had blood tests done. Uh, for the last five years, I check periodically to see where he's at with his kidney function, and the blood tests have never really come back good, but um, he gets his kidneys lit up every day, and he's still able to meet me at the door, jump in, bark, and run, and play, and eat, and function well, and we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Um, like I said uh, earlier today, with that, too, is there is a fine line where, where we do you know, there's comes a point where we do need to put an animal down. And the one thing I can say about the light therapy is you, you can make that easier for them too. Mm -hmm. Not always something we like to think about, but it's, it's a true fact. We can, we can make that better for them and us as well by using light therapy. A bit more calming. Yeah. And we have Harley, um, first Harley. And <laughs> <laughs> he come to me starved and I'm like, okay, no big deal. We'll put weight on him and, and recover. And, and well, after he recovered, he ended up with massive allergies where he lost all of his hair and skin turned black and itch, itch, dig, dig all the time. Um, this is, you know, I, I need to say what people really need to learn to, if they got dogs with allergies, get them off the kibble. And, and really evaluate what you're putting in their body. There's nothing better than, than a good fresh diet for your dogs. And being able to light up that point for Harley has helped his immune system a ton and, and gives him lots of relief. He loves the life. The next Harley is a friend of mine where with the winter dogs with the long backs, they, they tend to get sore backs. This is the second time I've helped him from being put down. And um, this was probably over a year ago and he's still feeling good. He just needs a light therapy session. This, um, I left some stuff with his owner and she was able to work with him once a day, every day per week and he was fine. It's just so cool. They, uh, that was a client then that reached out both of those times, right? Correct. You need to get lights. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, are you ready for the next slide? Yep. Sure. Okay. And I'm excited and I hope that the virus and everything lifts by then, but, um, if not, we'll evaluate at a later time, but the plan is in the first week of June to have a live hands-on clinic here at Cozy Kessner Stables um, that does include certification. You'll learn a ton. I can't say enough about PTI and what they're teaching. It's, it's worth its weight in gold. Thanks, Lori. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back a couple of slides. If you are watching this as a recording or if you're live with us right now and you want to reach out to Lori, her email is here. You can uh, take a picture of it. You can uh, jot it down quickly. And then she's also on Facebook. So you can find Lori on, on Facebook as well. 
and, and her stables. Does anybody have any questions for Lori? All right. Would you believe it? My neighbor's mowing their lawn. <laughs> April 4th. <24th. laughs> so, um, well, thank you, Lori. Uh, it's just incredible. Thank you. It's incredible what you're doing. I think everybody on this call, we're all the helpers that Mr. Rogers' mom to look for. Um, and we're, we're here to help and here to help inspire other people as well. Um, here we have, again, if you're joining us, for the Iowa Horse Fair. This would be our course called the Photonic Horse, and it is online. Uh, and it is the combination of 20 years teaching equine light therapy and photopuncture. So you might want to go check that out and see if that's up your alley. We also have the equine photopuncture kit, which is everything you need to get started balancing your horse with light. It is the online course that uh, was just on that previous slide. And it comes with two torches. Uh, a red and red plus, uh, I'm sorry, a red plus torch, which is red and near infrared, and then another torch that is just red light. You also get our most requested equine therapy charts, which are usually $20 each. So uh, this is a, a deal for $800. You're saving, I think, around $600, maybe a little more than $600, uh, as it would normally cost you around $1,200. Um, so if you have watched this webinar or um, have watched the recording of this webinar, um, go ahead and, and, and look into that. Here is the 10% off, and this is only through this Sunday, any PTI torch kit. Uh, so if you go to our website, you can, you can find a, a, a few different torch kits available there. Uh, find one that suits your needs. And if you're joining us for the horse fair this weekend, um, the, you would have to put in a promo code for your 10% off. That promo code is virtual booth, and it's all capital letters, and there's no spaces. Uh, Kay had put it in the chat box there, but capital letters, no spaces, virtual booth. And remember that uh, all of our kits do come with some education, as we know that that's very important when you have a light therapy tool. So you would get a health and balance chart for your horses, dogs, cats, and humans. Um, up next, we have another, um, another presenter. We've got Pam Davis, if Pam is available. Uh, Pam comes to us from uh, the, she loves helping all animals. All animals and Pam, that's, that's a great connection. But mostly, uh, she, she works a lot with horses, but even more specifically, miniature horses. So Pam, we'll turn it over to you if you're ready. I'm here. Uh, thank you everybody for hanging in there with us. Um, I started in 2013 doing energy therapy. I got my first level of healing touch for animals done then and my Reiki. I then went on to do more healing touch for animals, got to my level four, did some human healing touch, some more Reiki. I went on and did my certified light therapist work. Go to the next one. <laughs> um, I've also done some Masterson, and then I use Young Living and Duterra, so I've taken some aromatherapy classes. But I've gone to using the lights and getting my certification with lights because lights can do all of the modalities that I've already learned. Next, next slide, please. A little about me is I live on an acreage. I have miniature horses and Shetland ponies. I've had horses for over 42 years, and I used to trail ride and had a riding accident, which cracked my pelvis, so I had to switch to the little guys. Um, with the little guys, I've had show horses, rescues, and retirees. In 2013, I had a mare who was being shown in driving classes, and she just kept coming up lame and having pain and emotional issues, and the vets could never ever figure it out and track down an answer. Well, at the same time, I'm having all these issues from my cracked pelvis, and wasn't getting any answers myself. So I went looking for anything else that could help the both of us. And I was introduced to a massage therapist who used healing touch for animals and essential oils. So that's how I got started with both of those. This introduction into alternative healing modalities really piqued my interest in other modalities and ways of healing. So 
when I went to the horse fair, I was looking, checking out all the booths and I found Diana and Kay who were there the first year with the BioScan doing a demo. I was interested in it, but I couldn't really afford the system. I thought, well, I'm having a lot of luck with my energy work, so I just pushed it to the back of my mind. And I'm a distributor for dynamite specialty products, which are all natural supplements. One day I'm at home and I got a call from a gal who had gotten a list of distributors in our area. And she was making calls, just meeting other people. And man, this gal happened to be Diana. <laughs> you can't, can't get rid of me, Pam. I'll hunt you down. <laughs> And I, I recognized her from the horse fair, so we got we were talking about supplements, and pretty soon we we're talking about lights. And eventually, she and Kay did some of their equine and pet classes locally. I went to those. I, well, that's some more tools in my toolbox. And so, of course, from there, I had to buy some torches and my pain-free pad and some human pads, and now my certifications and my own business. <laughs> and this is for me. There's no better feeling in the world than when a horse that's in pain and is timid begins to release with the help of the lights and and heal. Their eyes soften, they lick and chew. Hopefully they'll give me a shake or two, or better yet, go roll after they're turned loose. And I've seen in other barns, in my barn particularly, their buddies just line up in their stalls along the fence like, me, 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 next, please, please. And I've worked on horses at the state fair, and I've walked in and you hear a nicker from them the next time they hear me close. And these are the little guys in the stalls that can't even see me. And they're nickering a year later saying, come work on me. So he, she is the guy in this picture. He, I just worked on him right before the coronavirus set in. He belongs to the guy who I consider my show daughter. And he, she is a perfect example of the timid horse in pain and what lights can do for them. He's a Shetland. Um, his little gal just figured out this year, I believe she's had him for a couple of years that he was shown too young and trained too hard. And he's got lots of physical, mental, and emotional issues going on. I've done Reiki on him in the past, but I could never get like a foot away from him. You could never get into his heart space. And we decided we'd try the pad on him last time I was out to have my hand up by his chest until the lights were on him. I could never do that. It was too much in his space. I started with his pad on his rump back by his tail and just slowly worked it up towards his pole. And he just started licking and chewing and was perfectly fine with me standing there. And we can go to the next slide. This is my buddy Wyatt. And I already talked about what I feel great about this so we can go to the next slide. He is my Shetland who really gave me the aha moment of why I should be using lights and not just energy work. He came up with laminitis earlier last summer and I've never had the problem with of laminitis with any of my miniature, miniatures or Shetlands before in the past. Uh, I've always got them on dry lots. When I put them in the pasture in the spring, I do five minutes for so many days, 10 minutes for so many days. I've never had the issue. So we're really not sure whether it was a grass related laminitis or pain from some other area. I did have the vet out. They did a test, test his foot, diagnosed laminitis in the right front. And I wasn't quite sure because Wyatt does not like the vets and he's a real, real, real drama king. <laughs> and <laughs> So, but I thought, okay, I'll be safe. I pulled everybody off the grass and they're already on the, on balancer. So I didn't have any carby, starchy, sweet feeds to worry about. Two weeks later, my favorite came out and why had only been slightly lame and grumpy most of the time, but I couldn't tell where it was coming from. Feet, front feet, hind feet, sacrum or where. His favorite worked on him and did find stretched lamini in the right front. So he trimmed him as sore as he could, so he got most of it out. So he's going to be a little bit sore, and I'm like, okay, well, then I'll go in and I'll get my lights on him. I started at his shoulders and just put light on every divot with two torches all the way down his front leg and on the ting points on his feet. And then I needed his feet to cool off, but didn't want to hose them. So I got into my, one of my oils recipes and used some oils on his leg and his hoof and then used a cold compress on him which cooled them right down. 
he never was sore after that. Brandon came back six weeks later and found nothing in his feet, no lamini, nothing. And he's been, he came up, he was still acting sore after that and I couldn't find, finally started looking like it was his sacrum area. So I came out with my pad after he, he actually been that way for a while because my meal cracked my arm and I couldn't get out in the barn and why it's finally getting bad enough. Like, okay, I got to get out there. I did a sway test and it's like, okay, we need the same setting. It's for muscle, ligament, and bones. So I'll just, while I'm doing his sacrum, I'll lay my cast across his arm. 20 minutes or actually 10 minutes into the 20 minute setting, I heard a pop from his back and he's been sound ever since. I said, okay, well, heck with it. I'm just going to keep using this. You know, I should have thought this before. I'll just keep using the pad on my cast and see how that goes. It was on for six weeks. I went in at three weeks. They took off the cast, x-rayed it, said, yeah, it's doing great. Come back in three weeks, and we'll see if we can take it off and keep it off. I went back. They took it off, x-rayed it, and they're like, wow, yeah, sure. No, you can take it off. We don't need therapy. Just go back to the barn start doing your stuff and working your wrist up. If you can't get it worked up to where you want it, give us a call. We'll put you in physical therapy. And I never ever had to make the call for physical therapy. Great. Next one. This is Mr. Weber. He also belongs to he, she's person. <laughs> he's 11 years old, 16 hands tall. So he's bigger than what I normally work on. And I've also worked on him with Reiki with um, he had injections when he was seven in his left stifle and hawk and when I talked to Hannah a few weeks ago she's like yeah come work on him because that stifle and hawk needs re-injected and his other side now needs it so yeah let's try some lights on him so I decided well I'll put the pole cap on him because we have Weber tied because he will just drag you around the arena he does not like to see show anyone that he's releasing he'll just stand there and bob his head up and down and with reiki he never ever did not even after he went back to his stall i'm not going to show it so, okay we'll put the pull cap on you i started back a ways and slid it up and had no problem and he started releasing with licking and chewing shifting his legs more licking and chewing and yawning and one point, he even rolled his right eye back into his head while he was yawning. And I told Hannah, well, when we're done, let's just turn him loose in the arena and see what else he'll do for us. So the big dude sat down and then rolled. <laughs> and he actually has a gal that comes at night, leases him at Hannah's barn, and they'd ridden that night. And I had a message from Hannah saying, oh, Weber's feeling very good tonight in a very good way. <laughs> and I know Weber, so that meant he was probably a little on the army side for them both. <laughs> You did your job well, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I did. He finally, and he's like, wow, okay, I'm going to do this. And my next slide. Mm -hmm. My next slide. So I'm currently working on completing my sessions required to receive my certifications in human photopuncture and my equine light therapist requirements. And then I want to move on and get the pet light therapist certifications also. And I want to get out, get my lights, do some horse shows, some rescues and demos so people can see what lights are and how they can help each other. Yeah, so hopefully we won't be in isolation much longer. <laughs> no, no, no. So I'll be offering photopuncture, light energy, and aromatherapy to horses, pets, and their people to keep everybody happy. Awesome. Um, go ahead and, and see if anybody's had questions for Pam right now. All right, then we'll, we'll continue trucking along here. Uh, again, we at PTI and how all these ladies have gotten a lot of their training is through Photonic Therapy Institute. Uh, the Photonic Horse is an online course that you can take. And um, especially right now, if you're itching to learn something new, you can go ahead and take and, and go play with your horses and take the online Photonic Horse class. Um, our horse fair specials, we have the, the equine photopuncture kit that has everything you need to get started balancing your horse with light. Um, it comes with the online course that I just described in the previous slide. You get two torches, 
with this kit. Uh, it is the red plus, so that is your red and your infrared light, as well as a red light, uh, red 660 th photopuncture torch, and 21 of our most requested equine therapy charts. So that is $800, um, which it's generally around the $1,200 range. So lots of savings there. If you want more information, you can follow this link below here. It's bit.ly slash the hyphen photonic hyphen horse. And uh, this all would be lowercase and you need to make sure you have your hyphens in there. Then we have 10% off any PTI torch kit. Uh, this goes through this Sunday. There's a promo code for that, and the promo code is virtual booth. It is all capital letters, and it is all one word. So uh, when you go in to select your kit and you want that 10% off, you would put in virtual booth. Um, and these kits will come with a little bit of education for uh, learning just, just enough about light therapy and, and photopuncture to kind of get you started. And we uh, supply you with health and balance charts for humans, horses, dogs, and cats. So uh, most any creature, <laughs> normal home or stable creature uh, can get some assistance. Uh, Kay, are you still with us then uh, online here? We've got- Of course. Got uh, Kay from PTI to give us a little bit of a commercial about uh, Photonic Therapy Institute. We've been talking about it all day and she's gonna fill us in on some of the details with it. And let me know if you have problems hearing me. I've had some unstable internet, so we'll see how this goes. Sure. Um, well, Photonic Therapy Institute, what is it? It's an online community. It's what we didn't have when we got started. I got started back in the uh, mid-1990s when I had a horse. My heart horse managed to bow both front uh, legs. That meant he ripped his suspensory ligaments. And... And they were fully bowed, completely ripped across. And two different veterinarians at the at, a, at an endurance ride said, oh, he's hamburger, you'll never ride him again. Pick out the halter to bury him in, he's dead. He'll never be out of pain. And my heart was just broken. Oh my God, I felt like I had done this to him. Well, it turned out that he had old bows that had not been disclosed to me when I had him, when I had him, uh, when I purchased him. I had a vet check, but I didn't have ultrasounds done. And I just, I, I, I fell apart. Well, luckily my vet who'd been out of town, she got there about a week later, she took a look at him and she says, you know, I've been reading about these red light therapy pads. We should try those. So I didn't tell my husband how much I put on the credit cards. And I bought a set of these and I started using them morning at night. And in 30 days, I called the vet back out and said, I need you to re-ultrasound him because all the swelling's gone. She says, oh, it's way too early. I said, no, no, no. I have a science background. I have to see what's happening. So she came back out, she repeated the ultrasounds and she was blown away. He had had full tears. Well, in 30 days, he had laid down all but one pinpoint hole of collagen. He had replaced all of that torn material. And he had tur it turned out he had old bows. His legs were full of scar tissue when we started. In 30 days, a huge portion of that scar tissue was gone. At 90 days, it was entirely gone. And he had baby legs. She couldn't believe it. We started him under hand walking at 30 days. At 90 days, he was being, he was being um, uh, ponied off another horse. I stayed off of him a full six months and then started bringing him back in conditioning. He is now a totally sound, healthy, happy pasture pony in his late 30s. And he's really what brought me to light therapy and taught me much of what I've learned to do. So for me, it all started with horses. Go ahead and go to the next slide. This is our, the three of us, this is the three musketeers. We decided a little over three years ago that we needed to create the community that we hadn't had we could start attracting light therapists, physical therapists, physicians, nurses, chiropractors, people who were starting to use light and create a community to support each other where we could disseminate real information about the differences between laser and LED, the differences between things that cost 
four hundred dollars and things that cost five you know five thousand twenty five thousand fifty thousand we could be non-manufacturer specific and really start supporting people who wanted to use light or wanted to use light professionally and that's where this really came from all three of us had invested in getting certified not only in light therapy for animals but certified as human light therapy um, light therapists and then human light therapy instructors which meant doing a deep dive into the science of light and that's what we've brought forward and we've turned into an online course and then our live classes on top of that for animals have been layered so that people could get certified in work in light therapy for horses for pets as well as for humans so now we spent the last two years really getting the equine course online it took a lot longer than I expected turns out it's a lot more difficult than I thought when you teach something live you can demonstrate with your hands you can go oh, no no not there over here right you don't have to be as exact with your languaging you don't have to be as perfect with your descriptions and your angles and your photos so it took a lot longer than I thought it would to put that into an online course but we finally got it done a few months ago and I've been so pleased by the results even those people taking our live classes now get the online class first they come to the live class and now it's just boom 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 okay I understand this 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 and this now we're just gonna do it so that's been awesome and then students like Lori and Pam and others who've just taken the class on online are showing what could be done with it even if you don't come take a live class which is really that's huge for me I didn't know that we could I didn't know if we'd be able to move it all online so the next piece is getting the pet class online and then the the advanced classes online as well so um, go ahead and so I said this is our this is the the trifecta here my name is Kay I have an animal wellness center here in southern Arizona. I'm very close to the Mexican border up at the mountains. And because of that experience with my heart horse sport, I've been using light therapy now for about 25 years. I had planned on being a vet. I already had degrees in animal health sciences and nutrition and biochemistry. But going down that, that path of learning the light and then, you know, lots of other holistic modalities light became my go-to tool it is my favorite way of balancing the body of getting the body out of pain very very fast and that's where that's that's where that's led me next slide this is the horse that started it all for me this is sport he's a little uh, crabbit arabian and he's now deaf as a post he doesn't have much peripheral vision i think he's got three teeth left in his head but he still thinks he's all that. You bring a new horse on the place and he's gonna spend hours trotting around, telling everybody he, he's the king of the world. And he's, he's really my best teacher. And he and I've had long conversations about this. And once it's time and he decides it's time to go, then he will also become my, uh, my teaching skeleton. And we'll, 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 we'll clean up the skeleton and have that all, you know, use the dermoid, the, I can't think of it, dermid beetles. And uh, uh, he's got so much more still to teach. So he's, he's, my, he's my love. Um, next slide. Of course, working on sport, that meant that I had to come back and work on my dogs and my cats and every other animal that was around. I've used lights even up against a manatee. I've worked with fish. I've worked with birds. Um, we hear from people all the time, lizards, all snakes, every living thing needs light, needs photons. Um, every, well, I should say not every living thing. I'm sure there are bacterium and viruses, and not even virus, but yeast and so on that don't. But um, what started off as a passion with helping a horse expanded into cats and dogs and, hor and, and horses and ponies and mules and then to people and and this it seems to be the same everybody comes in from what's their passion maybe they have a child with down syndrome and that's what brings it because they want to help with cognitive ability maybe they have a, a problem with migraines and 
they find a way to be able to finally put that fire out and not have to be taking drugs or be injected in the, into the sinuses with, with Novocaine, et cetera. Whatever route it is that it tracks you to it and, and, and teaches you about it, naturally then just expands into the next species. We're all living animals. And that's the beauty of the light works, the, the therapeutic light works with all of them. Slide. Diana's already told you about this. Just, uh, we'll just go right past it really, really quick, but this is the online course. It is 90% of it is how to assess the horse. Step by step by step, where to put your hands, what you're looking for, what happens when the horse responds, what does that mean, and then how to use your lights to bring it back into balance. That's the easy part. The tough part's learning the assessment. And that's really the power of this course, is learning to find where your horse is out of balance. Where is it in pain? Slide. And of course, to do it right, you need lights. And so please ignore the math on this. I was not feeling good the day we did this, and we had thrown in more charts. And, but when you add, if you had bought all these pieces separately, the red plus torch, the red torch, the, the therapy charts individually, the online course, it would be $1,400, $1,500. And that's where that save hundred, 600 bucks came from. Um, but this is, this is all the pieces you need to go out and really make a huge difference with your horse, with horses, with your family, with your pets, etc. So check it out. There's a whole sales page there on the photonic horse. And maybe you already know about meridians. You already know energy points. You've seen people do this stuff. Well, if all you need is a torch kit, you can do that. We've got a special going on through tomorrow night. Just use the uh, promo code, all caps, virtual booth, and it'll take 10% off the cost of any torch kit on our website. Slide. And of course, every one of our kits includes instructions on how to get started. When we first were selling torches, and they weren't even our brand of torches, we were first selling another brand of torch, we'd go to horse shows and people go, oh, I have one of those, but you know, I bought it and it's still in the box. I didn't know what to do with it. So we said, you know, when we start doing this, we wanna make sure people know what to do with their torches. So every one of our kits goes out with charts for health and balance points. And that may not sound like much, but this is an incredible, incredibly powerful set of points. Lighting up these 11 points on your horse brings up their immune system, helps relax the long muscles, brings their digestion back into to place, uh, calms them down, helps with their, their lateral movement, helps with their top line. These are really powerful points. So you get health and balance charts for horses, dogs, cats, and humans with every torch kit. And if you get a dental kit, you also get charts for using it in the mouth. Dental kits happen to include a fiber optic probe. So that gives you a whole set of more charts included with it. And starting um, here in April, everyone who purchases a torch, and if you bought your torches before this, of course, just say something, we'll turn it on. We're, we've put together two new classes. Everybody can get a free course on uh, intro to light therapy, or light therapy basics, I think it's called and um, uh, intro to photopuncture. So really, what is it doing? How does it work? What is a meridian, et cetera? Of course, if you'd like to do this, not only do you wanna start being able to help your horses, but maybe have, your horse, have the horse industry pay you, help pay for that addiction to horses. It's an expensive addiction, as most of us know. You can add in North American board certification from the Board of Advanced Natural Health Sciences. All you do is combine our online course or one of our live classes once those are up and running again with our online certified light therapist program. That is seven modules plus a practicum. It's very in-depth into the science of light, the physics about light, how light affects the cell at the cellular level the business of light therapy, how to stay safe, what are the forms you need, what's the languaging you use so that you don't piss off doctors and veterinarians, et cetera. So that, that's all put together in one course. When you combine that with one of our animal classes, 
you can be certified not just as a certified light therapist for humans, but a certified equine light therapist or a certified pet light therapist. Slide. And you know, please know that we're we are actively members of the scientific community studying light. Light therapy is the fastest growing and one of the most researched area of medicine in the world. At the university level, NASA, National Institutes of Health, et cetera. And the groups that are, are really behind all of that, these ivory tower researchers, they've developed WALT, which is the World Association of, Light, of Photobiomodulation, and NALT, which is the North American version. And um, coming this August will be the next world conference, which is every two years. This will be, assuming it's not canceled, of course, because what we're all going through, if it is not canceled, it will be in Alexandria, Virginia, this first weekend in August. Go ahead and slide. And we are a silver sponsor of it. We're doing research studies. We're doing speaking. We're doing real professional level work. And, um, you know, if you decide to geek out on the science of light, this is where to do it. I went to the World Conference two years ago, and it blew my mind. So I'm happy to talk about that anytime people want to get onto it. Please, please join us, follow us, and interact with us on social media. We have, of course, our public page, the Photonic Therapy Institute. Anybody can come, ask questions, join in on it. We have our PTI Light Brigade. This is a secret group on Facebook. You must be a friend with either Diana Connolly or myself or our partner, Karen Seifer, and ask us to add you to that group. So you can send us a friend request, send one to Diana Connolly, but in the friend request, you have to say, please add me to the Light Brigade. This is for students and supporting members. It's for those who are seriously wanting to learn about light, not people who want to you know, go buy a dollar laser pointer and save the world. Really want to learn about light. This is the Light Brigade. And if you're a business builder, anybody doing health work for humans, for animals, for pets, we have our referral partner group as well. So that's all in there. And then we're, we're building on LinkedIn and we're now building out on Pinterest as well. And of course, if you're on this, if you're watching this, you're into animals. And we have a public group on Facebook called Photobiomodulation for Animals. We have all sorts of people that work on animals. If you are somebody that uses light, you're a certified light therapist, you're working on animals, you don't have to be certified through PTI. You can, you can advertise your services on here, tell people how to get a hold of you, what areas do you work in. And, or if you're somebody who's just got an animal and want to know what to do for it with light, come to this group, ask questions. It's a great group. Slide. There we go. And, you know, we are, we, we are supported through memberships. Anybody can become a member of PTI for absolutely free. Our candle membership includes coming to our, our weekly training webinars. We do a deep dive training webinar every Thursday called Office Hours. Anybody can attend for live, attend live for free. That really differentiates us from any other um, educational uh, group out there. We do a different topic every week. We go into depth into the science of light. Then we open up the floor to questions, concerns, testimonials, brags, all sorts of things. If you can't make it on Thursdays but you, and you're not really seriously into light therapy yet, you just want to be able to listen to the recordings, we now have our new Lantern membership. $10 a month, $100 a year, gets you into two years worth of these recordings of our webinars. And there's so much, I mean, there's graduate level training in there. You can get all sorts of information for 10 bucks a month. Anybody who buys a torch from us, any torch kits, will now get 30 days of lantern free. So just even buying a torch is gonna give you access to those recordings, take advantage of it, get in, listen to what you can. We have a new group, new level two called Lighthouse. Maybe you're not a business builder, you don't wanna go super in depth, but you wanna have more access you want to have more in the way of protocols, getting into our research library and so on. That's $25 a month or $250 a year. And then, of course, our most common, our, our, our largest group of supporting members, that's our luminaries. 
these are light therapist students, light therapists, people using the light professionally, and the luminary members get business training uh, support. They become part of our referral partner program where you can get commissions back on referring people to our classes or our tools. You can sell your own tools, but sell our classes. It's, we're, we're very, very open about that, and we're there to support business builders. We want to grow the light therapy industry. So that's our memberships. That's our quick sales pitch. Yep. Feel free to ask questions about that. And of course, with any of the paid membership, you get to the recordings for office hours. Um, you can ask people that are on this call. You can come and ask on, on the, the Light Brigade. Uh, the office hours are an amazing resource. You want to know how, why does light um, help denature the virus in your blood? That's a big one right now. How does light help with pathogens? How does help light help to support the organs? How does light help regenerate tissue? We go into that depth every week. Yeah, you wouldn't think about it, but we're just kind of scratching the surface on, on the webinar today with light helping horses. It's oh, just... yeah, we're not, we're not going down a deep dive at all. This is just, this yeah. is just telling stories and, and talking about what can be done, not how it's done. Well, thanks, Kay. Um, You're welcome. If you guys have still uh, enjoyed today's webinar, uh, don't forget, Kay just went through uh, the Photonic Horse course online and the equine photopuncture kit, all the bells and whistles that you have there. Um, and I just wanna keep reiterating that if somebody sent you to this, this webinar, this recording, uh, you're watching this, make sure that you go back to that person for any questions that you may have on light therapy um, and maintain that relationship with them. Uh, if you have an order that you'd like to place, please go back to the person that uh, showed this to you. Um, this would be our 10% off through the Sunday for the Iowa Horse Fair for any PTI torch kit. And as Kay has just said a little bit ago, comes with these very, very, very powerful uh, health and balance points to, to work on yourself, your horse, your dog, or your cat. Um, we have our next speaker is Nita, and I'm not sure if Nita's internet is working for her right now or not. So um, at the moment, I'm good. Okay, at the moment you're good, so we'll continue moving along here. That could change at any given moment, but right now I'm okay. Pick up the ball and run with it. <laughs> All right. Well, hi everybody, good afternoon. I'm Nita Chaplin, and I just wanna share a little bit about my story of how I got started with lights and kind of where I'm going with it. Uh, it was about a year ago, I was at the Iowa Horse Fair and I was walking around enjoying the day like I always do there. There's so much to learn and so many different people that have so many different things. And I was walking around and I came to a booth and I saw some interesting pictures and they were before and after pictures and it caught my eye. So I was looking at the pictures and thinking, yeah, these look a little too good to be true. I started visiting with Diana and asking questions as a true skeptic would. And um, she started explaining to me how red light therapy worked. This is something I was not at all familiar with. I had never really even heard of it. And I was very intrigued. Um, at first, I was thinking, this sounds a little hokey to me. That you, This is too far out there. It sounds too easy to be true. And you know, what's the catch? But um, the more I talked to her, the more I realized that uh, there really wasn't a catch, and it really was a lot more simple than we think. It's very complex and very um, very scientific, but at the same time, very easy. So that was very intriguing to me. Um, we talked for quite a while, and in the conversation, I made the comment. I said, well, it's too bad this doesn't work on people, because it sounds like it, it covers just about everything. And of course she set me straight very quickly and let me know that it does work on people. And so then we started talking about the pad-based systems for people. And uh, my back and feet and knees were really sore and achy from all the walking that I had done and from sitting on bleachers all day and, and standing around a lot. So when she offered me a 20 minute session to sit in a zero gravity chair with my feet up, and to experience the lights, I jumped at the chance and said, sure, I'll, I'll try. 
And it was a little awkward because we were at the fair and, you know, the lights work, the, the better, the closer to your skin you get them, the better they work. So we were standing behind a blanket. I don't know if you remember that, Diana, but standing, you were holding up a blanket and I was trying to get pads down into my jean legs and things like that and, and uh, under my shirt. And, and uh, it was, it was quite interesting. But anyway, I sat there and in the, in the hubbub of the fair, I was still able to relax and I found myself yawning and getting very sleepy, but I didn't feel the lights actually doing anything. It wasn't like I felt pulsing, like I've used a TENS unit before and you feel that. So you expect it to be doing something. But uh, with the lights, I didn't really feel anything. And so I was thinking, well, this isn't doing anything. I'm just sitting here. But it still felt good to have my feet up, so I just enjoyed that. And uh, when the timer went off, I said, do I have to be done? I really want to sit here longer. I want more. But I, we finished up, and, and uh, I was relaxed. And I thanked Diana. She gave me a bottle of water to drink to uh, rehydrate me. And we talked about that a little bit. And then um, I filled out some papers, and we exchanged numbers, and I went on my way. And... I went ahead to finish out the fair. And as I was walking around, it kind of dawned on me that my knees weren't hurting anymore. And I've had double knee surgery, so my knees hurt from time to time if I'm on them a lot. And they really weren't hurting at all. And my feet weren't aching like they were when I had gone into the booth. And I had a new pep in my step. I had regained some energy. And so I finished up the fair that night and uh, thought, wow, my power nap really did me some good. <laughs> and really didn't give credit to the lights because, again, I couldn't feel them doing anything. Um, but I stayed and I enjoyed the fair and then I went home and thought about them off and on um, for a week or two. I, I don't know how long. It was a few days probably actually until Diana called me back and then we were talking and I had had a rotator cuff surgery and it was healing pretty well, but not as quickly as I wanted. Um, so I talked to her about that a little bit and I started thinking about the things that she had told me regarding the horses and how it had healed so many different things there and about the things we had talked about with people. And anyway, long story short, I ended up purchasing a six port pad based system, uh, the end of May. So just a little over a month after the fair and I started using them on my shoulder and as I was doing that, I started seeing some weird and exciting results. Um, like at the, the day at the horse fair, I noticed that my pain had de decreased. Um, this kind of blew me away because I couldn't really feel the pads doing anything, but I was seeing results. And my shoulder was feeling better, and I was able to increase my range of motion exercises because I wasn't hurting so much. And I noticed, my therapist noticed that I was doing more, uh, doing more of the exercises easier and getting more result from that. Um, well, I was thrilled because uh, these results were what I was wanting. Um, I'd also had a foot surgery a couple of years before that, which left my foot with uh, some nerve damage and not a lot of feeling in certain areas of my foot. As I was lighting up my shoulder, I started noticing that I had tingling in my foot. So one day I called Diana and I said, um, I think I'm crazy, but I'm lighting up my shoulder and I'm feeling it in my foot. And she laughed and reassured me that uh, my body was working on healing itself and getting back into balance and that she wasn't really surprised at all. I was, but she wasn't. Um, other things were happening as well. My sleep was getting better and I felt much more energized when I would wake up from my sleep. I don't sleep a lot of hours, I never have. I'm one of those weird people that only takes four to six hours a night. And, um, but when I would wake up, I didn't feel refreshed. And I do now, it's much different than it used to be. I was not getting sick as often. I noticed that my skin quality was getting better. And one day, one of my friends said to me, what are you using? Did you start using some kind of cleanser or something on your face? And I was like, no. 
because I don't use makeup, never have. And um, so I don't put a lot of chemicals and cleansers and things like that. I've just never been one to use those things. And uh, she was like, well, your face looks so much more vibrant and has so much more color. And she goes, you don't have those dark circles and bags under your eyes that you always have. And I was like, well, thanks a lot. But, um, but I looked and she's like, I, she was right. And I hadn't even noticed, but the bags were gone under my eyes and the dark circles were not like they used to be. So that was pretty exciting. Um, then one day I was getting ready to go to the doctor a little while after that. And uh, I started to shave because I had to go in for a physical. And I realized that the ugly purple spider veins that were all over the backs of my legs, uh, especially in the backs of my knees, were almost gone. And my legs were pretty clear. And I just couldn't believe it. And I really wish that I had taken pictures of what they looked like when I started, but I never expected something like that. That wasn't why I was doing it. And I didn't anticipate that. So I didn't take any pictures, but I really wish now that I had of. You're not the first one to say that. <laughs> oh, I, I had this scar and now it's gone. I wish I had pictures. <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's something as, as I'm getting into this, I'm thinking people will probably think I'm crazy, but as you know, if, if, as people buy these, I want to tell them, take pictures of everything on your body because it will change. And, um, you know, it, that's hard to explain though, when people don't know what to expect. Right. Um, anyway, I kept seeing these kinds of results in my own body and there's other things too, but, um, but those are kind of the highlights. And I just started getting more and more excited about what these lights are doing for me. And then I got to thinking more about the horses and I work, um, I volunteer at a camp in Indianola at Camp Wesley Woods. And it is a Christian camp that has year round programming. We have a beautiful horse facility with big indoor arena and lots of horses. And a lot of our horses are um, older retired horses um, that have some aging and health issues and they need a lot of TLC, which we give them. But um, I was telling my coworkers about the lights and how I thought it could help our horses. And so we began to talk and dream a little bit about what it could look like if we had uh, the torches to help our horses out. Um, I talked to Diana about, uh, wanting to get some, and she talked to me about becoming a referral partner because I was kind of at a stage where I was telling everybody I, that would listen about the lights because I was so excited about the things I saw them doing. So we hosted a class, um, a demo class at the camp and we invited in, I invited in some friends to learn about the lights and to, we gave a live demo that night on the horses so we could learn together about their reactions to lights. Um, that was something that I had not experienced up to that point because I had been at the fair and I had talked to Diana. I'd seen a lot of literature and pictures and I'd heard testimonials from different people, but I hadn't actually seen the horses react. So that was very eye-opening for me and very fun and exciting to see that night as we did the uh, de as Diana did the demo on the horses. Um, we did uh, one horse that his name is Casper and he's a um, off the track thoroughbred and he has a lot of issues. He has a lot of uh, pain. He has a lot of uh, uh, issues going on with anxiety and things like that. He's a hard keeper. We couldn't get him to gain weight and um he cribs all the time like all the time so those were some of his vices that we were working with and diana did his hyoid that night well she assessed him and and the hyoid was one of the things that she found and so uh she treated him for that and um uh sorry for the last session yeah, that's why I stopped because I knew I said treated and I was like, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> we did a session and we included the hyoid. Um, so that's what, sorry, that's what tripped me up. Anyway, uh, it was just miraculous to see what happened with him though, because he, uh, 
reacted very well. He did lots of licking and chewing and tail swishing and moving and uh, just all of the, the classic signs and big yawns and, and stretches and just all of it. And then we put him back in his stall when he was done. And that's when the miracle really started because we put him in the stall and typically I cannot even get the gate shut on the stall and he's cribbing. He's cribbing before I can put his crib collar on him. We did not put his crib collar back on him that night. And I was sitting there looking and he just, he wasn't cribbing. He was just standing there with his head down, relaxed, um, and just standing there. And uh, we, in fact, were not even paying attention to what Diana was doing on the second horse because our barn staff was all standing around looking, going, what in the world is going on with Casper? He's not cribbing. And we were just all kind of in awe about that. Um, he didn't crib for, I think it was three days after that, he didn't crib at all. And it was just such a big relief to him of the things that were happening in his body that he just enjoyed and relaxed. And uh, unfortunately, he did start cribbing again. Um, but we are working on doing lights on him on a more regular basis. And it has decreased from what it used to be. But uh, I'm hoping that at some point it becomes where he doesn't do it anymore. Uh, we were talking earlier today about uh, the addiction of cribbing and how that is something that they don't overcome very quickly. It takes time, just like an addiction with a person. It's you get used to that adrenaline high or however you want to say it. And it's something that um, it takes time. So I am hopeful that in time, as we keep uh, doing sessions with him, that that will stop eventually and that he will learn that he doesn't need to do that for relief anymore. Um, it was around Christmas time that I got my lights and started working on the horses at camp. And we've seen all kinds of great results with them. We have a lot of hip issues, sore backs. Uh, we've dealt with abscesses. We've got um, one particular horse that has stomach ulcers that we're working with and just all kinds of different things. But one of the things that I love is when I go out into the uh, pasture or out into the catch pen to get the horses or to put horses away or whatever, um, I always have my lights on me. And the, the picture that's up right now is that white horse is a, is blue and he he has blue eyes <laughs> and he um he has heaves and he is a horse that has a lot of respiratory problems um and he's uncomfortable a lot of times but this particular day he was really heaving and he was really having trouble breathing. And I was doing lights. I had done lights on the, the mirror that's to the left there that's looking at us. Um, I had done her. And then I was working on the second one there that, that I'm, you can see kind of behind Blue that I'm working on. And Blue came up and put his nose to her tail and just stood there and looked at me like, when are you going to do me? And I was kind of laughing at him because he was just, kind of in my way and in my, as I come around and tried to do her back end, he was right there and I'd shoo him off and he'd just, he'd step back a couple steps and do as I asked him. And then he would, the next thing I knew, he was right back up there again, like, don't forget me. <laughs> and, uh, and this is something that is becoming more and more um, familiar, more and more often it's happening as the horses are getting used to doing lights and I've done it on more and more of them they're coming up to me and wanting it done. And that's just really rewarding and really cool to see that happen. Yeah, be careful what you wish for, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we have a lot of horses and there are not enough hours in the day for me to do all of them in one day. So we kind of rotate through them. And uh, I wish I had more hours. I wish I had more lights and I wish I had more hands with lights in them to help me. Um, but we're, we're working on that too. So sure. that's, one of, that's one of our dreams of the campus to get a couple more sets of lights so that more of our staff can do lighting as part of our regular routine. So 
um, because it is so beneficial. Mm -hmm. uh, this horse is Arrow. And you can see there with the two pictures, um, if you look at the picture on the left, December of last year, uh, the protruding belly, he was our little pot pig, pot belly pig is what we called him because he's got such a big protruding belly there. But he is, he was very uncomfortable. He has gut ulcers and he has some issues going on with his uh, stomach and his digestive stuff. And he's very unhappy if you touch him in his belly, his sides, um, his girth area at all. He's not a happy camper. And um, he does not like to be groomed because it hurts to touch him. And so that has been very difficult because he's one of my favorite horses to ride. And I have not been able to ride him for a while because he's hurting and we just, we won't do that to him. So um, I've been working with him. And over the last couple of months, he has gone from being very crabby when I try to do lights or touch him. In fact, when I started out, I couldn't even touch the lights to him. I had to hold them a few inches out and just let the light shine um, on him. And he still, even at that, his skin would flinch and he would, um, he would get very testy with me, especially if it got anywhere near his um, belly area. And so that has come a long way. This last week, in fact, I was able to put the lights on his belly. I, did, I was able to do his sides. Um, and down underneath his belly and the whole thing. And he didn't, he did not get upset with me at all. He was very thankful. So I know we're making progress and you can tell from the pictures, um, <laughs> just the way he's standing, uh, ears are forward, head is in a much better position. His legs are under him. His belly is not so big. He's carrying himself so much better and his attitude is getting better. Um, he still has his moments. He still has his days. And he tells me very distinctly when he's hurting and where. And, uh, but the difference is now he wants me to help him where at first he was like, don't touch me, stay away. So um, I can't remember who it was earlier said, I think it was Lori that was saying um, to listen to your horse, but not to take no for an answer, depending on what, why the no is. And that's something that I am loving with lights is I am learning to hear what the horses are telling me. I am starting to understand the difference between a no and a no, not right now, that hurts, or no, not right there, let's work up to it. Right. And some days, um, some day I have one other horse that some days I can start at the, at the front and work back like I normally do on an animal but there are days where um, she's hurting and she will not let me anywhere near above her shoulder. And I have to start with her shoulder and go back. And then by the time I release the back end, then I can move to the front and do her head and neck. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, that changes from horse to horse, depending on what their problem is and what they're telling you that day. So those are some things that I think are really cool because you really do, um, you build that relationship and you learn your horse so much better when you take the time to do these things with them. Yeah. It kind of goes back to, to forging that more of a, a deeper bond with them and understanding them better, doesn't it? Right. Um, Over time and learning to listen to their cues of what hurts and what feels good. Um, you know, that's where we make our strides of progress. And like I said, Arrow is coming to me now for lights. He'll stand and let me do his sessions and let me touch him in places that I never was able to before. And we're not there by any means. We've got a long ways to go, but he's been hurting for a very long time. And this is the first thing that we've done. And we've tried lots of things, but this is the first thing that we've really tried that we are seeing a huge uh, not only physical difference, but mental difference as well. Anita, I hope uh, as we continue it through the seasons here, the warmer weather, spring, summer, you know, that he'll, he'll really come along in the next few months even more so, I think. Me too, because he's a lot of fun to ride and he's my buddy. Mm -hmm. And I, just, I love him so much. But uh, 
right now his his well-being and his health is what's most important so we're getting him back on track um which kind of brings me to the end of the end of the beginning of my story <laughs> um, the end of this part of my story but the beginning i hope and that is that i want to take lights uh so much further i just am so excited to to see the things that are happening and how God is working through the horses and, and the, the people and how God has put people in, my, in place for me to learn this stuff. And I am a firm believer that God has designed our bodies and the energy that is in the universe, the energy that we have in our bodies, it all comes together when it's used how it was designed to be used. And um, I'm just so excited as God opens doors in this area for me to uh, see how that all plays a part and comes together. And I am very excited to continue my learning and to get my certifications and to move forward with um, helping people help their animals and help themselves and empower them to be able to do it themselves. Thanks, Nita. She, Nita's yeah. definitely one of those people that, uh, uh, wants to learn it all yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm trying to take advantage of all this social distancing and um, slowing down to to uh, learn that much more and that much quicker and digging into the PTI library and listening to more and more uh, things. But I, I catch myself in the middle of, I'll, I'll start, sit down and I'll start to go through the library or, or review classes or, you know, learn things. And the next thing I know, it's four o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, oh, I was going to bed early tonight. <laughs> so well, we're glad we can provide this uh, rabbit hole for you to. to <laughs> I have not lacked for things to do during this social distancing. <laughs> Neither have I. I've been spending time putting this webinar together. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll, we'll see uh, Nita's information here at the bottom. She is, again, she started with lights on herself a year, about a year ago, um, but lights with horses more so uh, just a few months ago in December. So she's working on getting her business together uh, and all the details that come with that. So you can reach Nita uh, at, at the number there. Uh, Nita, you do text messages too or just phone calls? Text messages are great. Um, messaging on Facebook. I, I have a Facebook page. I am in the process of developing a business Facebook page. Um, it's getting closer, but it's not, I wanted to have it done for this, but it's just not quite there yet. Um, my lack of technology has slowed me down, but, You're I, <laughs> but you guys have been great in helping me. So I appreciate that so much. So she'll have an email coming soon. Uh, if anybody wants to reach out to Nita, I'm sure at some point she can provide the, the email for you if you call her or Facebook message her first. Uh, yeah, feel free to use that number. And um, if for some reason I don't answer, please, please, please leave a message because I get a lot of telemarketing calls that I get tired and I don't answer. <laughs> and so if you leave me a message, I will call you back. Awesome. Thank you, Nita. Thank you. I, I love everybody's stories for, for all the different separate reasons. <laughs> it's fun to watch everybody grow to this past year. Um, so once again, if you thought uh, that, you know, something clicked with Nita or you resonated with her story and her horses, and uh, you'd like to get started with light therapy for your horse, you can take the Photonic Horse Online course. It is our introductory course for two ninety nine, dollars and it's, um, it's, it's one of the courses that we've been talking about throughout this webinar today um, that really, uh, Lori was talking about earlier, uh, that's when Kay was saying that she was getting online and, and really working with, well, which way do I face the horse when I do this, and how do I put my hand on the animal when I do this, and really detailed. Um, so there's that, and then part of our horse fair special is everything you need to to get started balancing your horse with light. So that online course on the previous slide, you would get the 660 nanometer light as well as the 850 nanometer light. So that's one light torch with two different colors of light in it. Uh, you also get a regular red light and then 21 of our most requested equine therapy charts. Usually those are $20 each. 
and that, that's all for $7.99. It's a, it's a ganga deal, as Kay says. Uh, down there in, in Arizona, they had a, a commercial or something that ganga was the word. So it's a heck of a deal. Um, and then if you're kind of looking to get started uh, and you just kind of want to get a, a torch in your hand and, and start playing around, you can get 10% off through tomorrow with any PTI torch kit. Um, we do ask that if somebody sent you to this webinar or you're watching it uh, due to somebody uh, showing it to you, what have you, please make sure you go back to the person that sent you to the webinar for further questions or information about how you can get light in your life and, and order a system or a kit for yourself. Um, as Diana, we can I plug one more thing here? Oh. Um, I just, I've been at this a short time. And from the time that I took my online class till now, which is just a few months, the amount of things that have been developed and put out there for us as references are growing daily. Um, I'm just blown away all the time when I go in and I see the new things that are being added for us for information and for education and for clarity. So uh, kudos to all of you behind the scenes people that are doing that, Kay and Diana and Karen and all of you that are working on that um, because it is so helpful. Thank you. Thank you for your patience as we, as we do so too. Um, we, we have a long list of things that we're still working on getting up, but that's, that's wonderful to hear. Thank you, Nita. That's amazing. It's pretty exciting to be kind of on the ground floor of that as well. Um, being... You know, I was there right when you released the online class. I think Pam had done it as a um, trial, kind of. And just to be in on that and to watch that grow and develop has been really exciting. And it, it makes it feel like you're kind of on the ground floor of something that's just a volcano about to erupt. And it's really fun. Cool. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? Because once, once the word really gets out, it's going to go. <laughs> Um, okay, so, and then just wrapping that up, we uh, don't forget the health and balance points that also come with your kits uh, for horses, humans, dogs, and cats. Michelle, are you uh, ready to roll for your presentation? I okay. am. Story about lights. Um, oh, uh, bring this to the, the horse fair. Michelle was supposed to stay at my house last night because she lives further north of, of me. And though Michelle and I have never met in person, we still plan to one day, right, Michelle? <laughs> She's the only person I know that's got a, a Rottweiler Pitbull mix. It's actually her mom's, but um, we, I also have a Rottweiler Pitbull mix, so we we share that commonality there and lights. Michelle? Yes. Hello. Um, my name is Michelle Varney, and I am the owner of Inspirational Light Therapy, and I live about eighty some miles north of Des Moines. So not too far away. If you want to move to the next slide. Sure. I decided around, I think it was like October, November of this last year that um, I wanted to take it further and open, get my certificates and do the business portion of it. So I'm in the works of doing my light therapy certification for human horses and pets. And you can go to the next one. There was two reasons why I wanted to look for alternative stuff was my son Dakota, who at 10 years old was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma and the lymph nodes around his heart. And uh, had I listened to everyone else and waited another day instead of pushing to get the results I wanted and to hear the answers I wanted, um, my son would not be here today. So I'm glad I followed my instinct and knew something was not right. And then our other one was Pete. He was a rescue horse. We had went to a local rescue and um, seen him there. And when we went home, I told my husband that something wasn't right and I just needed that horse in my life, that, that he needed us. And so we brought him home. Uh, shortly after we brought him home, we noticed that he was having a lot of stiffness in his front legs. So uh, trying to bend his legs to do farrier work, 
or anything remotely picking his hoofs, anything like that uh, caused a lot of issues. He would actually rear up on us, not trying to hurt us, but letting us know that it hurt him. So we had to find some alternatives. And I had seen a vendor event that Young Living Oils were supposed to be at. So I said, okay, I'm going to go. Went over there and that's where I met Lori, who was one of our guest speakers earlier. And she had had something that she had used for a horse that had stiffness and had a mix of it and said, well, here, try this. And that kind of set off my adventure and our friendship. Took it home, used it on him and became hooked. And then she one day came to me and said, you know, I've been using these lights and I think it'll help Pete. And I said, okay, when are you using it next? And who are you using on? I want to come see. And so she said, I do it every night. And I said, great, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> Showed up, um, she did on two of the horses that were in the slides that she had. One was Josie. And I had seen Josie before because my son had been leading a learning halter class with him with her sorry and uh she she was walking so much better and and trotting better after being able to use the lights so I looked at her and I said I'm sold what do I need how much do I need and tell me everything I need for Pete <laughs> and she goes okay so you can go to the next slide mm -hmm. and I uh Took my husband over, I guess before the slide, but took my husband over and said, you've got to see this. This is, this is what I want to try. And he says, okay. And so I took him over, showed him, and he tried him over his jeans on his knees because he blew up both his knees in Iraq. So it's painful for him to do a lot of walking. And we slapped him on him and we went about our other business, um, looking and her showing me how she was doing things. And by the time the 20 minutes was up, he's like, wow, my knees don't hurt. And he's like, we need this. <laughs> and it took, it took a good week before he started noticing the discomfort in his knees again. And so um, the with these slides, these are our two current horses. We had to, well, I'll get into Pete in a minute. <laughs> these are our two current horses. And um, the paint is Paris. She's kind of a cranky mare diva type. And then Tux is the other one. He's a thoroughbred. He's very alert, very nervous horse. Does a lot of pacing. And uh, during the winter time, we had both of them all of a sudden try to colic. And so we grabbed the light. At first, it was funny. At first, I'm out there like trying to walk Tux at two in the morning because he's stretching out. He's pacing in his stall. He's trying to lay down. He's getting back up. And I was like, something's not right. So we go out there, notice that he wasn't eating. His stomach was rock hard. I touched him. He tried to lunge through the stall and kill Paris. <laughs> I was like, well, at least he didn't try to kill me. But, <laughs> and so I was like, okay, we got to walk in. We got to get him moving and stuff. And then we're outside 10 below weather and we're walking him every 20 minutes. And I said, wait a minute. I looked at my daughter. I said, what am I doing? And she goes, what do you mean? I said, go grab the lights. There's a colic chart for this. <laughs> <laughs> and so we took him back in the stall, lit up his colic points, and within a matter of getting halfway through them, I could hear his gut start gurgling, and he started to pass gas, and it wasn't five minutes by the time I was done. He was pooping, and he was drinking again. And I was like, oh, this is so much easier. <laughs> Like, why was I walking him around? <laughs> but so I, I've used it for that. Um, he has a tendency every once in a while, his one back leg will swell up just above the coronet band. And it just randomly swells up. We do the points. My son will actually come running in. Mom, Tux's, Tux's leg is swollen up. Give, give me the lights. And he'll go out and do it by himself. And I don't even have to be there because I know it's not going to hurt the horses and it will the swelling will go down for just with one time for months i think we've only had to do it twice on him and we've had him july will be a year uh paris she's kind of a 
drama queen that likes to be a cranky horse. If she is out of place, she will let you know. She will bite you. She will um, buck you off. <laughs> she, she's got an attitude of her own. So we have learned to balance her points before we do any kind of riding or anything with her. And it makes for a much safer ride for her, more pleasurable and for my son, because the one that is um, doing hers is the one that rides her. So we can go to the next one. They actually also asked me to teach them the colic points after we did that. So that if um, for some reason I wasn't home and they thought the, col the horses were gonna colic, they could do the session for them and, and help save their horses. So that was awesome. I love how um, about kids using light. Uh, it's just, it's just wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And they use them on themselves all the time too. Um, with fever, tummy ache, um, between the oils and the lights. That's the first thing we go to. We don't go to modern medicine anymore because it's much easier. You know, I don't have to worry about them overdosing on something or anything like that. Like they just go grab the oils or in the lights and within a matter of seconds, they're feeling better. Sure. So Pete is the one with the pads on his legs. As you can see the way he's standing, uh, that white, the foot with the white was always kind of pointed inwards. Um, you can see that he's in a lot of pain. He's standing stiff. His eyes are wide open. Um, and that's what we were dealing with when we started the lights. I had had the lights for two weeks. During that two weeks, I would Put the set, I would put them on his front legs, both top and bottom, because I wasn't quite sure. I knew that the stiffness went from top to bottom, but I wasn't quite sure where. And every time I talked to a vet, they just said, well, he's old and he's going to be that way. There's, there's nothing we can do about it besides put him down. And I'm like, no, there's something we'll find it. <laughs> and I did, uh, but we did this for two weeks. He was actually, at the end of the two weeks, he was able to bend his legs backwards to get them picked out and everything like that without it hurting him. He was able to walk easier. And then sadly, he got a spinal deficiency and we had to put him down anyway. But I, I was very appreciative of being able to find the lights because I was able to give him that time comfortably before we had to put him down. Mm -hmm. And he talked um, then, about lights too. Do what? Sorry. He taught you a lot about lights. Oh, he taught me a lot about a lot of stuff. all kinds of stuff. <laughs> the lights, the oils, um, tremendous nights of being up all night long, researching, trying to find something to help him crying myself to sleep because I felt like I was failing him. Lori was really there for me. She's like, you're not failing him. Like, do you think anyone else would do this for him? And I'm like, I just feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> so the lights really helped. Um, and then with Parrish, she's in the other one. This was just with living in the Northern States. We have long winters. It's, it's long on the horses, it's long on us rainy days, snow days. So we would just go out to the barn randomly. Paris was acting a little crankier than normal because, you know, she's cooped up. This was right around like we were getting a lot of ice. So they're cooped up in their stalls. They can't just be out roaming everywhere. And um, we took and did the session on her. And during the session, she actually, she's not typically the type that will relax. And so she started lowering her head, licking and chewing, and her eyes just got super soft. And that was such a great release because she's never that, she's always on guard, I guess is how you would put it. If you touch her and it hurt, she'd try to kick you. Or if she just didn't want to do something and you wanted her to do it, she'd try to kick you. <laughs> so <laughs> seeing her relax and enjoy it makes it enjoyable to you because you know that you're helping. Oh, and I think that's all. That those are, that's the end of your slides. Um, so again, if you're watching this and if what Michelle has said has really resonated with you, um, 
Her contact information is at the bottom of her slide here. Again, she's Inspirational Light Therapy and Inspirational Light Therapy at Gmail. Um, and she is also coming up and going with her business. So we look forward to, to hearing more about Michelle and all the other awesome things that she's doing out there. Thank you so much, Michelle. You're, I, love, I love all these stories, the horses, the kids, the family, how you guys are using light as a whole um, warms my heart. So thank you. Thank you. I think one last time here, if you're still with us, then uh, thank you for being here this full, this full time. We have the online photonic horse course. I love rhyming horse and course. Um, and it is our introductory and it course, and it again is online. You can follow this link to, to get there. Um, you can also visit our website. Um, and if you have any issues finding any of this stuff, please refer back to the person who sent you to this webinar and they'll either be able to help you out. And if not, they can reach out to those of us who can. Uh, so we have the equine photopuncture kit, which is everything you need to get started balancing your horse with light. That includes the online course we just went over in the previous slide. Your two different torches here at the 660 nanometer and the 850 nanometer. So that's red and infrared in one torch, followed by a red torch at the 660 nanometer range and 21 of our most requested equine therapy charts. It would be a, a packet, a little Bible packet of, uh, therapy charts for you. Um, and that is going for $7.99, which uh, again, Kay has said that, you know, some of our numbers were a little bit off, but still big savings on, on this here. Um, and you can go to bit.ly, the photonic horse. Please make sure that these are all lowercase. If it's capital, it won't work. And make sure you put the hyphens in. Then we have 10% off through tomorrow night. Any PTI torch, if you are on our webinars for the, the horse fair this weekend, um, those come with charts to get you going, and they come with some online courses as well, some basics of light therapy basics and photopuncture basics. So uh, when you buy your tool, you know how to best use your tool as well and get started. And, and those are, are the charts. Um, and with that, we'll take any, any leftover questions, comments, or concerns. Um, pause for a moment here. All right, and then we'll just go ahead and stop the recording then. One moment, please. <laughs>